Okay, and the show has started, folks. Welcome one, welcome all to the final, I should say final game. It's uh, the last round, and it is the game for first placed. It is uh, going to be Thrandrol playing Night's Watch, uh, also known as Anthony, versus Gamma016 playing as Greyjoys, also known as Gordy. So I'm in the game, and uh, Thandral is as well. Gordy is not quite signed in yet. We're a bit early. It's a quarter, sorry, it's a five to seven game, so we'll start in about five minutes. And uh, the scenario is going to be Dance of Dragons. And um, it's a big question, you know, on, on, on who's going to use what. Um, so Thandral has two lists. Uh, he's got his Jon Snow list. And uh, since we're waiting for Gordy, maybe we'll actually take a look at the two lists and do a little bit of wild speculation on who's going to be using what here. Let me just uh, open up the stat site and switch over. Uh, this can stay here. Let's go to the stat site. And let's switch my view real fast. Don't see Gordy yet. Nope. Okay, cool. Let's change this to Chrome. Uh, I hope this works. All right, that seems to be working. Cool. And let's go to tournaments. <coughs> let's go to my event. Load it up real fast. Players. All right, so, oh, I didn't know that uh, Zooster played his game today as well. I guess he uh, he won. I guess he played Wape. I would have watched, I would have loved to watch that game. Okay, so uh, let's take a look at uh, Thrandral and Gamma's list. So we've got Gamma over here. And he's got um, Bar Baylor Blacktide uh, and Dagmar. So his Baylor Blacktide list is very interesting. It's got Silence Men, which I've come to respect after watching Zooster's game. I didn't realize that uh, they had this aura of negative two morale, which really adds up. It actually makes it so that even morale five uh, p uh, factions like Targaryens and Night's Watch um, have a decent chance of failing just for being around the Silence Men, which is pretty cool. And he's got um, Baylor Blacktide, who has... Uh, to the last and hardened. He's one of the few commanders out there that have hardened. I say that, but I'm not. It's actually not even true. Eldon, Estremont has hardened. So does um, uh, Belwas has hardened, and uh, who else is hardened? Oh, Othel, of course. Othel is hardened as well. So hardened's actually kind of common as commanders go. But it makes um, the unit very, very hard to kill, especially when you combine it with um, Baron Blacktide. And he essentially gives you the giant rule where. Um, you suffer only one wound for every two unblocked hits. Now, I was thinking about this earlier today. I wasn't sure how this actually interacts with Hardened. So I'm going to double check the wording real quick. So Hardened says, um, after rolling defense dice, the unit blocks one hit, an additional hit. So after rolling defense dice, you block an extra hit. So I think, I think, so the question is, does Baron Blacktide kick in first? Do you half the damage and then block a hit? Or do you block a hit and then half the damage? Without reading the other card, I think you block the hit first, which would make Baron a little bit worse. But let me double check Baron's wording here. So Baron says, when influencing a friendly unit, this unit can only suffer one wound for every two unblocked hits. Um, yeah, so I think you'd roll your defense saves. And let's say, for example, you, uh, you, you, you fail six. I think you would then block one with um, Baylor. So you would take five. And then Baron kicks in, and you'd only take two. I th I think that's the order of operations. And if anyone's more knowledgeable about that, let me know in the in the, uh, in the Twitch chat, and we can talk about it. Ooh, lots of viewers already. Excellent. People are excited. Um, looking at the game. Nope, uh, Gamma's not yet in the game. So uh, let's keep on chatting about his uh, list here. So we've got. <clears throat> um, what makes this interesting for me is that because the scenario is Dance of Dragons, you're incentivized, generally speaking, to capture those middle tokens. And Baylor in a unit that has good morale, morale five, um, could be the key uh, to, to, to winning this scenario. Um, the influence of Baron falls off if you feel panic. So it, it makes a lot of sense to have him in a unit that's got good morale, morale five in this case. And um, Baylor's deck also has a card, um, Black Tide Conviction, where if he was to actually fail a morale test by one, he can play this card and um, and pass. It's actually rolled after. It's actually used after the morale dice are rolled, which is pretty cool. Um, so, what else do we have here? So, um, we've got Iron Makers and Victorion. This to me is kind of. Uh, 
uh, different than what I usually see, but I can see why this makes sense. Victarion in Iron Makers is a very tough unit, especially because he has taken um, our Eric Iron Maker, who can just put down pillage tokens when he activates and claims his zone. This unit can very quickly get up to a 2 plus save, and it can really rush up the field. So there is real potential here, I think, for um, Gamma to play this list. He's got two very durable units that can push forward and uh, grab the objectives. Um, then we have the Ubiquitous Trappers with Asha, um, just a you know surprisingly durable unit to do their morale 5, throwing out Warcry, and we've got uh, Ironborn Bowman to do some chip damage and maybe pass out some pillage tokens. Uh, his NCUs, as mentioned, is Baron Blacktide, who, you know, makes your unit essentially a dragon. He's got Jack and Hagar. I imagine Jack will be used to copy Baron, of course, but he does have the flex that he can also be used to copy enemy NCUs that might be very powerful. I was watching Chris Tran's game on uh, Sunday Slaughter, and he mentions that as a Greyjoy player, he often takes Jack and Hagar as Targaryen defense against um, uh, Barristan and Selmy which I thought was pretty cool. So uh, I think, again, primarily be used to copy the giant effect here, but in a edge case scenario, it could be used to copy enemy influences too. And we got Aaron Ironmaker to put down pillage tokens on your units. This list is eight activations. And again, I think it has potential to play in this scenario just because he's got two, two uh, very tanky units to uh, move up with. His second list is uh, Dagmar. We've seen this list a couple of times now. It's nine activations with a lot of cheap units, um, but there is something to be said about activation advantage. And he does have enough good units, it being the Reavers with Victorian, and the Iron Makers have still laid down quite a bit of damage. Um, so, yeah, DM is still not in the game yet. I'll just keep chatting. So, as the scenario goes, I think this list also has potential. Because if anyone stops to grab the objectives in the middle, um, either player actually has a lot of ranged firepower. So uh, Gamma has two units of Ironborn Bowmen, and he has a surprising amount of reach with the Ironborn Reavers and Victorian Greyjoy. Round one, you're pretty likely to get a Wondemir token, and this unit has immense threat range. You can, um, at the start of the Relentless Order, use a Wondemir token, shift three, move five with Victorian. That means you've moved eight, essentially. And then when the unit actually activates, shift another three with your second token that you generated round one, and then charge. So that gives you a threat range, I believe, of 16 plus D6 inches, and lets you crash into something that may have thought it was very safe. So, um, you know, I think the objectives will be very interesting. Will they actually pick it up? Because if they do, it makes you kind of a sitting duck for the Ironborn Bowman, and a bit of a sitting duck for this, you know, hammer unit of Reavers here. Um, we've got uh, Iron Makers with Ash Greyjoy to again be a durable tanky unit. Not as tanky in this list because he doesn't have Iron Maker, but he does have two units of Bowman, which could um, bump up um, the save. And the thing about um, Night's Watch, uh, in, in particular Anthony's builds, is that all of his units, I believe, have 5 plus armor. So it won't be that hard for Ironborn Bowman, especially with a Finger Dancer 2, to start generating pillage tokens. So uh, those are his combat units, and for his um, NCUs, he's got the Amazingly powerful Windermere, who is quickly becoming my favorite NCU with just his flexibility of either healing wounds or shifting a unit. Um, uh, Roger Carla, so he lets you kind of reshuffle your deck. I don't play Greyjoy's well enough to know what I'm looking for, but uh, Gamma has proven to be very knowledgeable and churn through his deck really quickly. And of course, Tycho for the uh, for the uh, five wound heal. All right, let's take a quick look. Okay, Gamma is in the game. Looks like they're still choosing lists. And we'll take a quick look at Anthony's two lists now. So Anthony has uh, playing Night's Watch. And he's got two lists. The one he's been using, I think, in every game so far has been his John uh, Snow list. So we've got John in Hunters, which is amazing because um, his Boldness and Courage will give an extra dice to both the range and melee profile of the Ranger Hunters. Uh, the Rally Cry is great too, as Conscripts are killing themselves off to heal the Hunters and the Crossbows, Rally Cry puts them right back on. Um, John's got two amazing cards. I mean, if you talk to Corn Half and Peter, he would say three amazing cards. The last game he used is Shall Not End to My Death to Great Effect, even though I often rarely see that uh, card uh, in action. And um, he's got, you know, the staple build across from the Watch Captain. He's got Ghost as a cheap activation. And he's got a lot of heals with Tycho Amon and uh, Bowen Marsh for extra card draw. This is kind of the, um, I'd say, a little bit off meta choice where he's gone for, I think, the greedier play with Bowen instead of the more reliable play with Jor. And then his second list, this is nine activations, by the way, is uh, 
what's his face? Uh, Roose Bolton. And I think Roose Bolton was a meta pick into um, Targaryens because of a Flavin has no secrets. And Night's Watch can actually drink a dollar tokens with um, Sword Brothers with their martial training, with uh, Sword in the Darkness, with Roose's cards. It's used to cancel out key cards like Fire Made Flesh or um, Tycho's healing ability. Um, so he's got three units of conscripts, two units of Sword Bros of Watch Captains, and then he's only got two NCUs. This is Bowen again going for the slightly greedier play. Though in this case, it does make sense to take Bowen because Jor is used normally to attach key vows. And when you're playing um, Othel or John, it makes sense to look for Hone, Hone Enhancement or for the Watch. But when you're playing Roos, you're actually looking for Roos's card specifically. So it's, it's nice for Bowen just to turn through. And we've got the Burst Heal from Tycho. Interesting that um, he values Tycho over Amon. Amon probably provides you more wounds over the course of the game, but Tycho provides you healing at a very, very important turn. So people have noticed this is essentially the quote-unquote cancer Othel list, except instead of crossbows, it's Sword Brothers, and instead of Othel, it is Bruce Bolton. So I hear some things happening in the background. I think the game has started. Let's take a look into the game now. Hello, folks. So many tricks. Uh, all right, let us uh, switch over back to Tabletop Simulator. I can hear things happening in the background. We can probably see what they have chosen. Okay, so um, it looks like Gamma has gone for his Dagmar list. So nine activations here. Uh, it's five activations plus the pseudo activation from Victorian Greyjoy, his three NCUs, and we've got the Jon Snow list, which is also nine activations with three NCUs, also has a pseudo activation from the Watch Captain. Um, terrain has already started going down. I imagine, okay, so the red hand belongs to Gamma. I imagine he put down the forest first. It looks like uh, Anthony then put down the bog, and Gamma's now putting a stakes right over the objective. So this is very interesting because um, it kind of shows you the intention of Gamma. Gamma, I don't think, means to grab the objectives. And honestly, it makes a lot of sense for him not to grab the objectives with most of his units because they're very, very squishy and will get shredded by crossbows or um, John Hunters. In particular, his commander... Dagmar is in the squishiest unit possible with 6 plus armor and 8 plus morale. They'll just die uh, explosively to anything that looks their way. So I don't predict Dagmar is going to be going on the front line. He'll probably be lurking in the back and only emerge when it's safe. Um, similarly, uh, Jon Snow you know, is in a very dangerous unit and he does not want to grab an objective and slow down. So I predict that um, the objectives for the most part will be ignored. And <laughs> having stakes on top of that will definitely encourage that to happen so it looks like gamma put down a forest to mitigate some of the night's watch shooting often we've said the forest doesn't really do its job because you know when you are so wide with so many trades you can never hide all your stuff anyway and inevitably you have to eventually charge the night's watch crossbows and the wood actually gives them a fortified bonus so it often backfires so I, i'm a little surprised he went for the wood because it often hurts you more than it helps you um it looks like Anthony's put down some bogs to kind of stifle any charges from uh, the Greyjoys. And uh, Gamma has just made this objective inaccessible uh, until the stakes are destroyed. Not inaccessible, you can go over it, but just take some damage. They've diced off her side, and it looks like Gamma has won. It looks like he will let um, Anthony choose. Uh, and will probably... I don't know what side he's going to take, actually. Does he want the bog? Does he plan to play defensive? Probably not. I think he wants to keep the bog on Gamma's side. Let's take a look at the objectives real fast. We've got the Weakened, not such a good read, uh, card. Panic, this one's good. Affects you within long range. And we have Max Dice. So the central objective is kind of relevant. The other one's not so much because they rarely come into play. So it looks like... Um, it looks like... Ooh, I could be mistaken here. It looks like Gamma may have won the role and chose, chose side himself. Okay, so he's deploying um, his archers first. And, you know, again, I know we have a lot of veterans playing, but for newer players, um, this is the way to deploy. You want to always deploy your weakest things first or your most mobile things first. Now, in the case of Greyjoys, everything's on foot, essentially. Um, and his key units really are the Reavers, the Iron Makers, possibly his commander. His commander won't see a lot of play, I don't think. Um, 
But you know, the commander, if if one side is completely open, could dash down, grab an objective. So it does make sense to keep him back. So his weakest units are his archers, and in fact, I, I wouldn't even consider this unit to be particularly weak. For four points, the Greyjoy archers are actually some of the most point for point damaging units in the game out there. Especially when you start thinking about things like finger dance or um, getting some flank shots in. Now, in return, um, Anthony seems to have deployed. Ghost and the conscripts, again, things that are cheap, things that are mobile, saving his key units till the end being the John Hunters and the Watch Captain Crossbows. So I think, you know, because Anthony has three things, I think I actually didn't see. He probably um, chose side. Gamma probably won the dice off. Anthony chose side through the bog in the opposing player's zone and started putting down his three units. So Gamma's back. Uh, it's Gamma's turn to deploy, and he'll have to start deploying something important. I predict... Okay, so I was going to say he might put down Dagmar, because I, I don't think Dagmar is going to get on an objective. But he, he's going for Asha and Iron and Iron um, break uh, Iron Makers instead. Straight down the middle, trying to use that Force Recover. This unit is normally very tough, but I think it might be hard to generate... Yeah, we'll see. It'll be, I was going to say it might be hard to generate pa uh, Pillage Tokens, um, because he doesn't have Iron Maker. But again, everything on Anthony's side here, except for Ghost, has a 5 plus armor save. So the, the Bowman could do a lot of work. And if these Iron Makers get a 2 plus save, even crossbows may have difficulty dislodging them. Alright, so Anthony's back down to his fourth unit. Now that's what we call music volume. Jock Rock 98 soundtrack. Are you ready for this? <laughs> that's like, oh man. I wish I could play some music. <laughs> oh man. Bombastic. Darling fantastic. Yeah. Love me some Shaggy. Um all right, so it's over to Anthony. So um what do you put down? I think you put down the crossbows. I think you put down the crossbows, and I think you saved John for last. John can explode almost any unit here on his own except for the Iron Makers. So I would throw down John last, and the crossbows, because they have the Relentless, can easily redeploy, surprisingly, where they need to go. I might put the crossbows a little off from the wood here, so that you can maybe draw some angles at a diagonal. Um, but we'll see. We'll see what Anthony decides to do. So he's going for the crossbows, and the question is, does he go straight down the middle to kind of contest the Iron Makers, or does he, or does he choose an angle where he might get some side shots into, um, into their flank, perhaps? Actually, that would be a very good. That might be a very good deployment if he puts crossbows on one side and hunters on the other, which would f make it very hard for the iron makers to protect both their flanks. Okay, so I think at this point he should probably put down Dagmar because I think reavers are his his hammer, and he doesn't want to reveal where they're going to go. Now I wonder if he's going to go over the bog with the Reavers, or if he's going to go down the open here. Now, I think you can't. I think you can't go down the open with the Reavers. They're just going to get destroyed utterly by um, by the crossbows, whereas because of Relentless, it gives you a chance to maybe not get alpha struck by, by John's unit. So it's very interesting that even though they both have nine activations, because of Coronation Tactics, one of um, Dagmar's cards, he can actually, at uh, key moments, out-activate the Night's Watch, which can be a very, very big deal if Gamma can time it properly. And I believe one of another one of Gamma's, uh, Dagmar's cards actually lets him recycle um, that card too. So we might see four coordination tactics go down over the course of the game. All right, so Anthony's just kind of solidifying his deployment here. Again, it looks like he has the same idea where he's going to try and move forward and catch some side shots with his crossbows. And now, okay, so Gamma is actually committing his hammer now. Interesting. And this is what I'm talking about. Yes, the Iron Makers are relatively kind of safe, but nothing else is, right? These crossbows can still shoot a, uh, you know, almost anything else. And I wonder if how cagey will Gamma be with these um, Reavers, because if he loses this unit, it's a huge activation disadvantage for him. Uh, so it looks like the Reavers are down, and I wonder if Anthony's going to put down the crossbows, or the John Hunters on the other side to give the Iron Makers really no good options as to which way they pivot. 
Because I think if they go straight forward, the crossbows can probably find a side shot. And if they pivot towards the crossbows, if John's coming on this side, um, they'll expose their flank to John. For anyone joining a bit late, um, the three objectives are weakened, which doesn't do much, max dice doesn't do much, and we've got the panic, which might do something. Ooh! So instead, uh, we see John, uh, Anthony, I should say, load up one flank. He looks like he's going to commit all his um, his hard hitters into one side here. That might be a mistake because Dagmar is kind of now free to go on this side. And eventually pick up this stake, uh, destroy the stake, and grab the objective. Um, I feel like he's he's given Dagmar free reign to deploy on the right here. All right, so I wonder if, because uh, I, 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 I don't see a reason why Dagmar needs to be anywhere near the middle. He does have Gang Up. Don't get me wrong, he does have Gang Up. Gang Up is an amazing ability, but it does expose his very, very squishy unit. I think he'd be much safer to use the Bowman along with the Trappers to like rush down his objective, have the Bowman destroy it with an attack. The Bowman can be then in a position to shoot some flank shots into crossbows or maybe these conscripts down here. Um, and uh, Dagmar can just grab this piece. I was playing uh, as Greyjoys the other day, and you know, Bo these uh, Greyjoy Bowmen can do a lot of work against conscripts. You know, if you get figure dance off, you're probably going to kill you know two, three guys a turn just from shooting, and then the panda test can kill another two, three guys as well. Like they can really whittle down this uh, this wound bank. All right, so it looks like they have. Uh, just played around the train a little bit. Looks like it wasn't locked when they flipped the table, perhaps. And Dagmar is actually going kind of central. Like, this does put you at risk of getting shot by crossbow still. I, I would have considered putting him on the extreme flank. I wonder if he's trying to get value out of gang up. Now, we might see him just pivot and march down this way. So, this could be a, this could be a feint. So, uh... Looks like I heard some shuffling. All right, they're both shuffling it up, both drawing three. And um, Gordy should have first say on uh, who is first player. It is scary to, okay, I was gonna say it's scary to go first because you then give crossbows as first activation a shot potentially. So he's wisely giving Anthony first option. It's kind of like, you know, no great choices in a way because now Anthony's going to be able, going to, be able to draw more cards to the envelope. Um, or, or in this scenario, is the horse more important? I don't think the horse is because, again, I think grabbing objectives is actually a trap. Um, so as predicted, Anthony grabs the envelope, picks up two cards, and I wonder what token he's going to put down. Probably a vulnerable onto something that he wants to shoot, either Iron Makers or maybe the Reavers on this side over here. Or maybe a panic, you know, those um, Reavers are only leadership 7 with Victarion, so a panic would let you push through more damage. Interestingly, he's putting a weakened token, which I wouldn't have expected. I mean, they do have crit blow, so it's not, not a terrible move, but um, I don't know if they're going to get into combat. Uh, so Gamma's going onto the horse. I predict he's going to move the Iron Makers, or he might replace with something. Okay, he's putting down Finger Dance instead. Uh, start a turn, which is great. Great opening card. This is the card you want to see for uh, for Bowman. He decides to put it on this side here, which makes a lot of sense. This unit's the safest, furthest away from John, furthest away from the crossbows. And um, similarly, uh, Anthony puts down, and now his watch is ended, which is really good because it means that when um, Bowen Marsh activates, he'll be able to draw an extra card. And as predicted, the Iron Makers push forward. They're going to try and take advantage of this wood as soon as possible. They can actually grab this objective right away. And if he pushes really deep, he may be able to keep his unit from getting shot by crossbows. We will see. So now we have the remaining zones. Um, I predict that you know there's no reason to use Roger Carlaw really. So he's probably going to put down Wendy for a token. Um, at this point, you probably throw down... Ooh, okay, so he's throwing down Bowen onto the bag, 
He is denying removing the weakened token, and he's going to be you know looking at one uh, a card. It's interesting he does this because he's leaving the crown open, and the crown uh, is actually not terrible against this list because he does have two of conscripts, and every wound you take off conscripts is less wounds to heal with in the future. Um, I guess he's not that worried because he's got Amon, I should say. So even if he loses, I mean, he could lose four guys and then he would only heal two. All right. So when he goes down, but okay, I, I guess, I guess, you know, maybe I'm over getting ahead of myself here. There's no way Wendy would pass up making a Wendy token. So yes, when he goes down to put on a Wendy token and uh, we're going to see Amon go on the swords, do nothing. Roderick does nothing. And now we're on to the significant activations. All right. Nice and fast. Cool. I like it. Well, you know, it's interesting. Um, I'm part of a gaming club um, called the Conquest Gaming Club. And um, the club owner, who's a good friend of mine, his name is Rahul. Yeah, and that's the other thing, too, I was going to say, Mickey. Is that it's, it's, it's sometimes hard to make generalities because it's very, there's so many factors to, to kick in. But anyway, um, you know, he asked me, he, he's, he was watching my Twitch channel and he's like, you know, he makes some good stuff and he's got a YouTube channel and he's like, you know, would you want to do song content for, for the club? And I said, eh, I wasn't sure, but because uh, the update, the update is coming out soon, it actually might be a good time to actually look at all the factions again. And I do love talking about song. So um, you might see me make some more content. You know, I thought I might hang up, hang up my, hang up my, you know, my laptop after this Canadian Open was finished. But you might see me make more content once the patch drops. Okay, so um, significant activations. Anthony had to. Looks like they both did a quick one. Um, so Anthony went first. Looks like he did the conscripts just to edge forward. And then we see the Bowman also edge forward. Interesting that, okay, so yeah, he's not marching 10, it seems like. And the reason why he's doing this is because crossbows actually have a lot of range. He can relentless move five and march 10. So he can actually redeploy 15 inches and that can get the crossbows easily within shooting range. So he's keeping his Bowman very safe at the back. He might just slowly edge towards this uh, stake and uh, blow it up, you know, maybe late into the game around round three or round four. He doesn't want to risk these guys diving in really quickly. Uh, I would call that the Mitch maneuver. Mitch is the the is notorious for marching deep with crossbows. Um, so yeah, playing very conservative, very safe, makes sense. And now we've got Ghost. Ghost is activating, and with his eight-inch move just redeploying onto the line. Looks like both players are taking it pretty slow for most of their activations. So I'm really curious what's gonna happen with the Iron Makers. Does he push forward 10 into the wood or does he also play it slow and just kind of lurk in, in the back? And I'm also very pleased that this round seems to be going pretty quickly. The opening round typically is. The opening round is just kind of some, some positioning um, but, uh, you know, some of, some of Thrandrill's games have gone extra long, so I'm hoping this one doesn't, uh, doesn't go past, uh, you know, too far beyond the two-hour mark. We will see. Fingers crossed. Dagmar is pushing up pretty far, I gotta say. Pretty far. So, he can only go nine due to the bog, the rough on the bog, but he's going up further than I would expect. Like, this unit is so squishy with, uh, six plus armor and eight plus morale. I mean... I guess the thing is, you know, with six plus armor, the sundering doesn't matter on the crossbows. <laughs> you can't modify my armor when my armor's already six. Um, but morale eight is pretty bad. There's no werewoods. Like, they're going to melt if he gets into range. So I, I hope he's careful with that positioning. You know, these crossbows can definitely get, with a 15-inch maneuver, get in range and shoot Dagmar up. So kind of scary if you ask me. Six hours, let's go. Oh my god. <laughs> oh god. Well, I've got my diaper on, so, you know, I don't have to go to the bathroom. <laughs> I'm prepped. Prepped and ready. Um, okay, cool. So, <clears throat> they both activated two. Back to Anthony. I imagine at this point he should probably just move up his conscripts to, to this spot over here. They don't have to push too far forward and get shot by his bowmen. 
And uh, let's see. You know what? I was pointing at the wrong unit. So Dagmar's here. The crossbows are actually over here. But I still think a 15-inch maneuver could get them very, very close. 15-inch being a 5-inch relentless and a 10-inch march. All right. All right, so he's actually activating the crossbows. That's a bit surprising to me. Generally, you want to pop the order first. One, because if you forget and do it improperly, you actually... Uh... Oh, wow. This is this is a Mitch move. <laughs> this is the Mitch march. So he's marching his crossbows deep. And this is going to be very interesting. He's going to... Oh, man, he's going to have a very big zonal control here. And the question is... What does Gamma do about it? Anthony has just said, you know, I'm going to control this left side of the field here. Gamma has two options. He can either redeploy and just kind of circle to the right along here, or he can just be like, I'm going in, boys, and just go for a deep, deep charge with Victorian. I think that's probably the wrong play. He'll be more or less unsupported. And he's going to eat a stand and shoot. There's no way to turn that off. Um... I wonder if Gordy's going to be very, very careful and very patient and just try and circle around um, their threat range. Now, don't forget, this is, unit is not locked in place. They can still do a relentless maneuver. So, you know, once things start positioning, he can put himself back into danger range. Um, so Gamma's going to react with his bowman, and this is the power of, of range control, right? So I've talked about this before on the stat site. Um, I think every army needs some form of rain control. Um, these crossbows have marched forward, and these bowmen have not really moved much at all. They are staying two inches and in change away. Looks like almost three in this case. And it's interesting because these bowmen actually have the option to shoot the crossbows. With the one-dimmer token, they can shift forward, shift with their uh, range activation, but it's not a shooting match they want to get into, right? You'll do a couple of wounds, they're going to pass the morale, and when the Night's Watch crossbows shoot back at you, they're just going to shred apart these these uh, these Greyjoy Bowmen. But if it wasn't for this unit, you know, he might have maneuvered more aggressively. But now that they're here, this is great zone of control. The other unit, of course, that does this um, for any of your players is Calvary. Calvary with their free maneuver and then a charge of you know, five or six or whatever, plus a D6, also um, has a zonal control around you. And uh, I, I know when I play against Cav, I always go, okay, I'm playing against Flayed Men, they move five, they charge five plus D6, so if I'm like, you know, 14 inches away or 13.1 inches away, I know they need a four plus. And most players, most players, not named Mitch, uh, they don't like a four plus charge, so... Um, you know, it, it'll make them think. And if you want to play super safe, you put yourself five inches or even six inches away. You don't want to be too far back because then you give up too much position also. So Gordy has come as close as he can to be safe. Um, but yeah, I, I do like this play and I really wonder what Gordy's going to do with um, Iron Makers and Reavers. Will they just circle around? So in reaction, the conscripts are going to push forward just to provide healing support to the bowmen or crossbows. And we're now down to Gordy's key units. He's got the Iron Makers, and he's got the Relentless and the Action on the Reavers. So, I mean, I wish I could draw. The Iron Makers are barely out of range, I believe. So they can just very patiently kind of edge forward a little bit. But because Dagmar is already activated, they really can't wiggle too much. You know, they're barely out of range as is. He can maybe just come a little bit closer. Ooh, and John, he's measuring John. Oh, that was um, that was Gamma. Gamma was measuring John's threat range. I'm always shocked at how far the movement of six, shift to range six goes. You know, I always um, am surprised when I get shot, you know, unexpectedly by that. And of course, if you put Watcher in the Wall on, you now move seven, shift to shoot six, which is like a range of 15 inches, which is pretty, pretty good. <clears throat> so again, Gordy is measuring super carefully here. He's trying to stay barely, barely out of range. And this is the nice thing about playing on TTS, or even in real life, you just say, 
okay, well, my intent here is to stay more than two inches away. Do you agree? And, you know, you don't have to be super precise. Um, as, as my gaming buddies know, I'm like the king of the gauges right now. I've got all these different size gauges. I should I should probably find a two-inch gauge to... Uh, to, <laughs> to oh, you know what I, I do have, though? I've got a 14-inch gauge to measure the shift and shoot. Um, I never thought I'd need more than a 12-inch gauge, but I measure 14 all the time. Okay, so it looks like uh, he's doing him a favor here, and he's saying, okay, if you shift forward two, you know, is this safe, right? And this is, you can just be super precise. You can just say, okay, this is your maximum threat range. I'm going to stay just bit outside of it. Do you agree I'm out? And boom, it, it's good. Uh, I think Gordy is, oh my gosh, look how close that is. Yeah, he's barely, barely out. Okay, cool. And then this unit's going to return back to their um, original position. So yeah, he's just going to be patient, it looks like. Just be patient. That sounds pretty good. So, of course, Anthony can still... In fact, he has to relent this now, I believe. Oh, wait, let me just think about this. If he activates John, he activates Victarion. I have to double check. How does that wording go on the Watch Captain again? I think he's got through Relentless now, right? It says, do not activate this turn. Can he do it if he has no more activations left? I can't remember. This actually is important. Can he pop Relentless as his last activation? So, okay, people in the chat can help me out here. I don't remember how this works because the Watch Captain says, perform an attack or maneuver. Do not activate a unit this turn. What if you can't activate a unit? Because you have no more needs to activate. Can you still pop or let this? I think in terms of like, does he get a player turn? He definitely gets a player turn, right? But I don't remember if he's allowed to pop or let this if there's nothing left to activate. Okay, cool. Whoa, whoa, we're, we're, <laughs> we've got some disagreement. Peter says no. But so yeah, I think that I think that's what I remember. If if there's still a player turn, you can still do it, seems to be the consensus. Um, it is Thrandril versus uh, Gamma. This is uh, literally top table for first place. He can't be the last one. Well, isn't this what's going to happen here? It looks like he's activating the John Hunters. So that means that Relentless will be his last action or activation. Are we saying he's not allowed to pop Relentless as his last activation? Activation, quote-unquote. Laser. Okay, you mean the last turn. Okay, got it. So you're saying that, like, in this case, Gordy has two more to go, I believe. Right? He's got this unit. So now... Oh, he just pushed hard. Whoa. He didn't pop a Wendy token. But he just marched 10 into the teeth. This is going to be amazing or terrible. There's only two ways this goes. There's no mid midpoint. He just pushed, I think he just marched 10. And that means that these crossbows are going to shift backwards, get a shot. And he might charge in as his first action. He can, with Wendy tokens, charge in. But if he doesn't one-shot this crossbow unit, he's going to eat a full John combo, I imagine. Wait a second. I did not see a shot, nor did I see Relentless on this side here. Oh! Oh! Oh, because Gordy took the last activation, there's no more player turn. He effectively said, oh, that's really smart. That's really smart. Because Gordy did the last action, that ends the round. Neither player gets, um, neither player gets uh, Relentless. And he, he avoids getting shot. That's pretty cool. Okay, so the distance now uh, is pretty close. With with the Wendy token, he can definitely get into range. Um, and let's see if, if that's the first thing he does. He is actually going to... Looks like pop a Wendy token here. That looks like a three-inch shift. And he's going to take the sword, I think, and just try and do some chip damage to these uh, crossbows. Very interesting. Ooh, wow. Okay, so did he pop a Wendy token? He did pop a Wendy token. For the shift, he's taking the sword into a shot. Very cool. Yep, 
Yes, that was a, that was a pretty cool move on Gamma's part. <clears throat> okay, so shifting up, he's well into range. I'm surprised he's getting this close to the crossbows. I mean, maybe he's trying to also get in range of this uh, objective, which is pretty cool. And there's no finger dance, so just six shots on fours. A good start, four hits. Good start. Um, it's a little bit quote unquote dangerous because it does allow Anthony a chance to proc um, shield, and that will be set up then for the Reavers. He only saves one, and it looks like there's no shield in play. Okay, I also want to check. Yeah, Anthony did not discard anything, and Gamma did. He discarded a Bless with Stone, Bless with Steel. Okay, cool. Uh, he actually fails Panic. He fails the Panic. Looks like he does... Oh, he's playing a Fire. Okay, <laughs> a little hasty there on the, on the Pillage token. So he's playing a Fire, um, and it's going to let him re-roll re -roll the panicked, uh, panic Dice. And he can choose which dice he re-rolls. I would probably... Let me just think here. You need to roll 5. It's actually the same odds. The odds of rolling a 5 is the same as rolling a 2+. plus. So you might as well just re-roll the 1 and the d3, I guess. That, that would have been pretty sick if he actually failed that panic test. And he barely passes. Barely passes. So he's good. Uh, that was the sword. Now, I wonder... I wonder what... How does... Uh, how does... How does um, Anthony react to this? So... He is actually checking to see if he can get a uh, shot, uh, a close range shot into the Reavers. He is checking to see if he can get a close range shot into the Reavers. Um, I'm, that's interesting. You know, as the second player, you're only getting two zones on the tactics board anyway. The envelope has less value to him because he'd have to discard a card. You might take the bag and just not take any damage. You know, take the bag with Bowen could be a good play to draw your fifth card and to heal up those crossbows. Because I don't think there's any way that these Reavers will one-shot these crossbows. Uh, he is actually popping the Conscript Order. Okay, so he's killing two Conscripts. To heal three crossbows. Talk about an upgrade, folks. That's a that's an upgrade. Can I get an upgrade? And he's going to put Tycho where? I mean, I would take the bag. I would just, but I would use Bowen. Oh wow. Okay. So this implies that one of his cards is not so good, right? The fact that he's willing to discard a card implies that one of these cards ain't that good. And we've seen Anthony discard light <laughs> often, which is very interesting because I actually like that card. Uh, oh, he's going to throw away. Is this... It shall not end. So, uh, I don't think this card's particularly great, but Peter, my gosh, last game against uh, Obiscius got such value out of this card. He It procced each time. He killed Friedman and killed Drogo and played Take the Black. That was pretty epic um, during his game with his Obiscius. So, we discard It Shall Not End. Good play. And putting on a token, looks like he is still thinking this weekend's from before and yeah, he's going to weaken the Reavers. They do only hit on fours for now. And you know what? That heal is very important. You know, it, even though he can get a max heal out of it, you don't want to lose a rank from um, the Bowman. And the other critical thing, too, is by taking the envelope again, he is denying uh, Gamma quite a bit of churn. Um, he himself has gone through eight cards without Bowen yet. He's gone through eight cards, and Gamma has only gone through five, right? So um, he's limiting Gamma's card play options here. So it's Gamma's go. You know, it looks like he might be going for just a straight-up shot, which would be a mistake, I think, with the bag open. He might want to take the... Ooh, what happened here? <coughs> I think Roger disappeared. Make my monster grow! Uh, so Roderick might be going down... Um, the, the blue Roderick base is now going to bother me. Uh, and he's going to do the Roderick Shuffle. So very cool. A very cool tech. Again, I don't play graders well enough to know what I'm looking for. But be, having been denied the envelope twice, I want to say. Was it twice? 
No, only once, only once. This is a way to turn through your deck, which is really, really cool. So um, I, I, I want to say he chucked away... Well, he had two cards? Hold on. He had three cards, and then he... I think he drew four, right? That's how he works. You get the cycle plus one. Ooh. Hello, Carlo. Welcome to the game. Must be very late over in England. All right, so it looks like uh, Roderick is going to be used to push forward down the side. Again, they're pretty safe down the side here, and they can eventually, over you know subsequent actions, destroy these stakes and um, grab this objective and just start scoring one point around. You know, so this is actually a very good position for these archers. They're very very safe. They can provide support fire and they can score points. Whereas I don't think these objectives over here are going to be picked up anytime soon because it just makes those units sitting ducks this unit might be very clutch actually they also have finger dance on them too which is pretty spooky and they may be in a position to do flank shots on these knights watch crossbows i was doing some random math hammer on the way to work today and it's a contrived situation because i was calculating straight up damage output and it turns out that Greyjoy bowman for four points do almost as much damage point for point as Night's Watch Crossman. But it's not real because, as Carl pointed out to me later on, no one takes Night's Watch Crossman uh, like this. You always take them with a captain. And for three more points, that three point attachment is getting you another seven points worth of shooting, essentially. Plus, you get an extra shot from Bolds and Courage as well. So um, they don't really do as much damage in the, in the real game. Is the, is the bottom line. So, um, looks like Bowen is take. Wow, he's actually drawing another card. He's going to be discarding something else, really churning through his deck. He's now seen. He's now seen nine cards, but he's actually seen eleven cards, right? Because he's seen the two bottom cards on his deck as well. So, Anthony has seen eleven cards of his deck, and we're going to have to discard one. I wonder what he's going to throw out here. And he's taking out take the black. Great card to throw. I mean, that card is. So win more. Like if you're if you kill a unit and you took some damage, um, and then you heal up, it's it's just like so depressing. But in the beginning, it's definitely a dead card when nothing much is happening. Um, and he's gonna zap something. He's looking to zap the bowman, I believe. They do have the worst morale at morale eight. That doesn't make a lot of sense. And they fail. They take two. Was there a better target? Hmm. It's interesting. He targets the bowman and not. Um, Victarian's unit, which is more dangerous. It implies that he might intend to deal with Victarian with John, and yes, use these crossbows to blow up these archers, which they can easily do with you know a couple of volleys. Um, it looks like the last zone was Wendemir, and he didn't make a token yet. He might be using it for we do not sow for another attack. He can use it for a heal. Lots of great options here for Wendemir. I do love Wendy tokens, I have to say. It's hard for me not... Okay, he's going for the Wendy token, which is probably the more flexible play. It's kind of interesting. The Wendy Mir token, in this case, is better than the heal, because he only is missing two wounds anyway, but it'll let him draw a card as well. Okay, cool. Now, the question is, do we see Aim on tap, or does Anthony feel like he needs to actually activate on board and do some damage before he gets attacked by the Bowmen or by the Reavers. I think this is a good position to actually activate the Relentless Order and take a shot at these Bowmen. Um, you might kill, you know, you might kill enough to remove them, get them down to the last rank, actually. So you're too far out of range for the um, rerolls. You don't want to shift up. He's actually thinking about shooting, <laughs> shifting forward and shooting the Reavers. I might just blow apart this unit, you know, force him to Tycho heal this unit, which would be really good for, for Anthony. He doesn't want him to heal, you know, Iron Makers or the unit Relentless. If you made him heal up these Ironborn Bowmen, uh, I think that'd be a big win. So he is with an 8, barely with an 8. He can shift into a re-rollable shot, and it looks like he's going for it. He's just going to go for the Reavers, looks like. I mean, this makes a lot of sense, too. You know, this is kind of a weak point in the army. If you kill this unit, which is not very durable, you do kill two activations, which is very significant. So he's barely in range, seven shots hitting on threes. 
He has gone through a lot of his deck. He might have all the defensive tech he wants with shields and maybe the second fire. So we will see. Now I wonder if this shift put him in put him in range of Asha. Is the rerolls worth it? We'll find out. Asha's war cry might be a big deal. Uh, only one miss. I mean, I'm speaking out of hindsight here, right? Oh, it stays at one miss. So six hits, saving on sixes. This is this is gonna hurt. This is gonna hurt. Plus, there's a stand and shoot as well. So this is dangerous. Um, Tycho maybe pop very early this game. All six go down. Ouch, that is painful. And now we have a panic on seven. So this is gonna be. I think either way he has to pop Tycho. Either way he has to pop Tycho. I think you cannot charge. They. Barely pass through panic, good stuff. They barely pass through panic. You cannot charge in because you might very well die to the stand and shoot, or should I say, ready aim fire. So I think Tycho has got to get popped. I mean, you can Wendy heal, but it's only going to heal two, right? You're going to go down to your last rank for sure, and then John's going to finish you off. I think Tycho needs to get popped right now. Never targeting with the token, because you heal. Yes. Yeah, it does blunt their charge. Uh, the Reavers have a good profile, though. It goes from 7 to 6. Very strong 5-point unit. So I think I think we got to see a Tycho heal, but Gamma's definitely looking at his hand. He did fish very hard with Harlock um, for, for, for more cards. So it implies that he didn't have... What's really cool, right, is that you... you um, know that the cards that you're putting aside will not be in the shuffle. I think that's how Harlow works, right? You don't actually shuffle in the cards at the, when you when you use the token. Um, yeah, you put them to the side. So if you put aside three trash cards, you know that when you draw them, they won't be in, um, you won't, they won't be in the deck. How does Gordy react? How does Gordy react? He probably can't get shot again straight up. If he gets shot again straight up, he could just lose the whole unit. I think he got to pop Wendy or Tycho or both. And there we go. Tycho gets popped, 5 wound heal. The only question to me is, do you also use Wendy for the full 6 wound heal? It looks like he does. He does use the Wendy token. He's going to get a full heal. He is popping Warcry as well. Uh, none of these are the same trigger. Or I should say they're not orders and uh, or tactics cards. So the order goes down. He did edge into range. I don't think he's going to take four wounds to remove those tokens. He's putting down the Tycho heal, and he might do the Wendy heal, or he's doing a shift. He did pop the one Eber token, but he may not be using it for a heal. Maybe he's using it for a shift. Ooh, I wonder if a shift to the side. Oh, wow. Very cool. Uh, Yeah, it might get him a five inch. Oh, he's going to get into the flank. That is... Yes, that's actually on the left side, um, but if it's on the line, Gordy would get to choose anyway. But yeah, that is in the flank. Ooh, that's going to be very nice to generate some uh, pillage tokens onto the Reavers. So very cool positioning on, on Gordy's part here. So we're going to see six shots re-rolling to hit into the flank. Night's Watch crossbows re-roll at close range. Well, these four-point guys can also re-roll under the right circumstances. And he's got a strong roll on his first shot. Five hits already. Five hits turns into five hits. And we're saving on sixes with a vulnerable token. This should be five dead. Even a shield I don't think is going to prevent the pillage token from going down. Which is very significant. That's going to really up the output on Victorion's unit. And this unit here has already um, spent their uh, supply rule as well. So will he make him re-roll? The answer is yes. Um, this makes a lot of sense because Victorian, when he charges in, also throws down a vulnerable. So he's lost five. Interestingly, this might mean that Anthony pops his Tycho as well. This might mean Anthony pops his Tycho as well. So that was a very nice shot. Very nice shot. Five wounds and a pillage token. I think, is he considering a shield? I think a shield would be, I shouldn't say wasted. It won't be wasted because you know you're going to take a hit from the Reavers. So blocking a hit from the oncoming weavers may not be bad either. And if you can spike two sixes and de deny the pillage token, that'd be pretty huge. I don't see him removing the models yet. Okay, he just did. No shield was played. He might be saving it, and now we've got a panic at minus one. 
This is very significant. He's already played one fire, and there's a panic token on the unit. So the big pass, big roll. So the panic token's going to be played. I think I would have saved it. I think I would have saved it personally. So he passes the six. I would have saved it just because you generally want to wait for a panic roll where you got one high, one low, such as this. And that may have happened with... Um, the reaver charge, you know. So again, it's a bit of bit of maybe, you know, hindsight speaking here, but it's usually not worth re-rolling when your opponent uh, has great two two good numbers on the board. Um, okay, that was a very good shot. I think we might see a Tycho pop. We might see a Tycho pop here. Seven guys here could die to the semtax from the reavers with the vulnerable token. Even with, I mean, I guess even with a stand and shoot, they'd be six dice. Stand United Brothers. Ooh, a second form of heal. So who will he peel it off of? Will he pick and choose from conscripts and rangers? Or will he take it all from the conscripts? So no need for a Tycho heal. So he is taking two from here. And uh, is that it? I would take off two from Conscripts too, person personally. He's checking their threat range. Hey, there's Tom Bell. Congratulations, Tom Bell, on the win of the Scars GT. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Especially with those reavers oncoming. Oh, okay, so I think they're double checking the wording. Um, I, I personally would probably remove two wounds. And he does. Okay, so we got a four wound heal in the crossbows. Pretty good. No need for Tycho yet. And what do you do? I probably would. Okay, so here's the thing, right? You can definitely take a shot now with their activation and whittle down those. Um, that might be the play. You might just shoot. There's really no other threats. The tactics board is full. There's no we do not sow attacks coming. You shoot now with rerolls. You kill six-ish guys, and that could spell doom for this unit. I mean, I shouldn't say that. They do also have one more one-year token, so he could heal two more, right? But this unit is going to be super crippled if they actually go in. They're not going to kill the crossbows, and John is right there to finish them off. So, yeah, this is a very, very tough spot for Gordy. You know, he, he did kind of rush forward with the Reavers, so he's kind of committed them, and he's already burnt through his Tycho. Okay, so Anthony has activated the crossbows. He's just going for the shot. Seven dice on threes with rerolls. And here comes the Daka Daka. Seven shots on threes. Uh, not great. Only four so far. Rerolling into uh, six. Oh, only five actually. Five saves on sixes, sundering on a five plus save, and no sixes rolled. Five go down, and now we have the ever critical panic test. Will he take additional damage? And this unit is already half dead. Already half dead. They fail their panic, but only take one. So this unit cannot even charge, I'd say. I don't think they can even charge. If they charge, they'll just get wiped by these crossbows. And this is what makes the crossbows so obnoxious. Not only are they just, you know, shooting you all day, all night. You, you, when you charge them, they get another volley, you know, it's so disgusting. Um, yeah, I, these guys cannot charge. They're just going to die. So what do you do with them now? I mean, Anthony is first next. There's no escaping. There's no escaping these crossbows. I... Am I am I crazy? Is this unit just dead no matter what? They charge. I mean, you. I guess you charge. I don't know. <laughs> oh, you know what you can do? I just forgot. He has relentless. He can relentless backwards five and maybe march across ten to just stay alive and stay as two activations. That might be the best play he has, is to relentless backwards five and then just march across the back of his army and keep those two activations alive because they are not charging in. Yeah. I 
I always look to go for RR or to maintain unfavorable distance for opponent. RR rain? What does RR stand for? I always look to go for RR or to maintain unfavorable distance for opponent. RR. Rerolls! Rerolls. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not I'm not hip with all your lingo there. Yeah, uh, and Mitch does this all the time too, our our our, uh, our um other Canadian compatriot here. Oh, so Asha has captured the middle. She has dared the middle. Very interesting because um, now again, the crossbows can draw a line to shoot her down the road, but she's also blocking John? Not necessarily. I mean, this is a long charge for John anyway. Um, also, interestingly, all those shots from the bowman, and he did not play Watch from the Wall. So presumably he doesn't have it. Watcher is such a great card to attach on for the extra movement and the rerolls. John may not do a lot of damage to Asha. You know, with the fortified rule, with the three plus save, um, she doesn't have any pillage tokens on her because there's no Eric Ironmaker and uh, Gamma was out of range when he killed a rank to put a token on them. So they're not super durable yet, but they're still pretty tough. You know, three plus save with Asha's morale is pretty good. Um, and yeah, you know, I, I can see Gordy picking up this objective as well. He may slowly get a points lead. It's all a question of will he avoid getting tabled by the machine guns that is the uh, the Night's Watch here. So I think Anthony's trying to do some sort of shift into shoot. I don't know... Okay, so that would be a maneuver, and he's trying to see if he can take a shot. So he's right now in an illegal position. He's barely on his own tray, and I think he's also barely out of range anyway. So he may want to refine that movement, but it also looks like he's going to be too close to the Iron Makers as well. So I don't think this is possible, and I really, really hope he doesn't spend 10 minutes trying to like make this happen. I really hope he doesn't try and finagle it. I mean... He's going to check because this is the finals and he wants to get that advantage, right? But yeah, this might this might be a while. All right. Okay, so he's in range, but now he's too close to the Iron Makers. He's actually got... He might be able to do it, I think. And really what they should do, they should just let him pick up the tray. Like we all know with six inches, he has enough movement to do this. So the question is, can you stay an inch away and within six of the rear? See, like he, I don't think they should be so finicky. So here he's still in range, but he's still too, still too close to the Iron Makers, and he's just trying to go for a kill. You know, eight shots could kill these guys, especially with the failed panic test. Uh, and I think that is going to cut it. I think that's going to cut it. That's barely within an inch, and it looks like they agree. They agree. Okay. So he's going for the maneuver to a shot. He's not going to charge uh, Asha at all. He'd rather just kill this activation. Now, there is What Is Dead We Never Die, and Gamma did do a very hard um, reshuffle with uh, Harlaw. So we'll see if he has it. We'll see if he even dies. He might even die, you know. Um, shooting is a bit unreliable since there's no, there's no rerolls. So we'll see if this shot is enough to kill five reavers. Yeah, he's barely in range, and I think he was barely an inch out. Thank you, Carlo, for providing those uh, links there. All right, so we should see this is seven dice. I wonder what they're discussing right now. Uh, to me, it's like you put yourself in this position. He should just take your shot. Eight shots on threes. Seven shots plus bonus and courage. And I wonder, you know, down the road, what will Ghost do? Will Ghost redeploy to the right and engage these bowmen? Probably. Right? Just keep those bowmen honest. Yeah, I wonder what they're talking about right now. This is the panic objective. Yeah, so I think based on Anthony's play, he's going to give a slight points advantage 
to get a more you know powerful on field advantage. It's really really minor though. Like Gamma's not only not even gonna grab this one. And this position also keeps him safe from the Reavers as well, which is pretty cool. I wonder what they're trying to figure out. Some very careful measuring here. They're measuring like a two inch. Are they checking the inch? That's Anthony measuring the inch. I wonder what's so important. Yeah, I, I would say uh, Jor, not Jor, Bowen is the greed play. Yeah, I think um, Jor is 100% reliable, and I think, you know, Carlo is a, is a very control safe player. That makes a lot of sense. I would probably go Jor myself, too. Um, but, uh, you know, talking to, to Thrandrill, I think he. Uh, he likes Bowen as the uh, the greed play, and um, you know when you think about it, by the and I think this is really comes from Peter Peter Corn Halfhand. Um, he doesn't even with Jor attach Watcher on the wall, or sorry, he doesn't even attach for the watch. He attaches Watcher on the wall instead. And he was saying to me, you know, like uh, you have three cards. By round two, you should have gone the elf at least once. So you've seen five. Um, he has Bowen. And Bowen is going to see four more cards in the process. So you've kind of like gone through nine. And you might think, well, there's no way you're going to actually see nine cards because, you know, you can't have a hand of nine. And we've seen we've seen Anthony actually very... Oh, he's just going for the charge. After all that... <laughs> oh, oh, maybe what they were checking is can he charge into Asha, get some free damage... Retreat into a position one inch away and still shoot. Uh, and the answer is yes. Oh, that's pretty smart. I never even thought about that. That's actually very, very smart. Get some extra damage in with the attack. Um, I don't think there's any retribution things Greyjoys can do. But yeah, you know, he's very aggressively actually discarded a lot of his cards. He he had five cards, still went for the envelope, still used Bowen, and just discarded all the junk, like it shall not end and take the black early game. So yeah, I, I agree, George is a safe play, Bowen's the, the greedy, you know, I want to see all my cards play. And John attacks with a sword in the darkness. Now, because Ash is activated, you don't get a double token, but an extra dice is always useful, especially since it attaches and will be usable for the whole game. Alright, so we get eight dice hitting on threes with rerolls. Ash will get a fortified bonus, saving on threes, no vulnerable token. She should tank most of the damage. Great roll from Anthony into one miss still. So seven hits, saving on threes. We expect fairly minimal damage here, especially with her morale of five. But who knows, you know, if you kill enough guys, you can actually contest the objective. Ooh, slightly, slightly below average, maybe? Not really. It's to be expected two or three kills. And uh, panic on even, panic on five. So three down and a panic. Oh, the game has crashed. Oops. All right. This happens, folks. Let us uh, see if we can get back in. All right, there it is. No big deal. It happens all the time. Oh, and there is Peter in the chat. Victory to Eastern Canada. <laughs> oh, game is not uh, letting me reconnect yet. Hmm. All right, there is the game. Let's try this again, folks. This is a good time to go to the bathroom, get a drink, 
Oh, it looks like I'm back in. Okay, so I'm back in. The players are back in as well. They are connecting. I'm connecting. Um, I don't know if they made look at all these artifacts. Very interesting. Uh, so it looks like we rewound just before he took his panic test. So he killed three, and we're looking for panic test. I don't think this is the panic test. <clears throat> So they're just replacing their pieces. And yeah, they're just making sure the wound count looks good. I don't think they're re-rolling their saves. Are they re-rolling the saves? That seems kind of odd. There were seven saves. Nope. He missed one. Okay, that's way, way better. That's also eight dice, which is too many. Swords going down. Uh, I feel like he should have lost three. I feel like he should have lost three Iron Makers, because I definitely saw three fails. And he didn't hit eight times. It should be seven dice. I mean, he made all eight. So if they're going to say that that's the roll, I guess it doesn't really matter. But uh, that's a big difference, killing three Iron Makers and not killing three Iron Makers. So I don't know. Maybe Gamma disconnected before the roll happened. That's probably what went down. Gamma probably disconnected before the roll happened. Didn't see the roll, we assume. And um, that's why he's getting a reroll here. So unfortunate for uh for anthony and he's now going to take eight shots into the reavers this is a very important role this could kill the unit and i wonder if i hover over this does this disappear i guess not yeah it's so funny when tts re um like resets you get all these strange artifacts popping up okay we got eight dice on threes oh that is so weird uh not a great roll only half hit only half hit this is still killable with the Panic Test, so they're not out of danger yet. And we'll see if Gamma was able to draw. Well, I mean, let's get to the death first. Uh, so he fails three. He's down to his last two. This is a very, very important Panic Test. Very important Panic Test. This could be two activations dead. This could be nothing. But Anthony's also first next, and he will probably blow them away one way or the other with the crossbows. Uh... I believe you are owed a panic test, sir. And you did kill three dudes. I don't know why they're moving this. Maybe something was caught. All right, and the panic. Big, big roll here. Does he finish off the last two Reavers? Panic on seven. No tokens that matter. And they live! Close, very close. They live. That was very, very big. Uh, this is the middle token. Okay, cool. So, yeah, this unit... This unit can get away. If Gordy relentless backwards and marches away, this unit can survive. They can only maybe die to a crown zap at that point. But if he moves away, it will leave Asha high and dry to get shot by uh, crossbows. So I wonder if Gamma just moves backwards and marches away and just saves the two activations to fight another day. And by that I mean just turtle in the corner, not getting killed by crown zaps. Is that a rating call? What was that? Oh, he um, just used Rally Cry, I believe, to heal back two conscripts, because they were within 12 inches. Anthony has been kind of bad at remembering that rule, but he remembered now, which is which is good. Good night, Carlo. Most likely. Yeah, he needs to save these guys. They need to back up, I think, and march away. And what they are safe to do so at this point. Is he popping a Wenny token to... Oh my god! Is he popping a Wenny token to move this unit aside and charge Victarion in? What a madman! Is he charging in Victarion, the two model Victarion, into John? <laughs> I 
mean, I, I'm aghast. <laughs> is he popping? Is he popping the Wendy token to shift Asha over to charge Victorian in? <laughs> YOLO! I mean, John has the woods, too, to cancel out the Sundering. How many attacks do Reavers throw in their last rank? I mean, they are going to be vulnerable. They will take more damage than it looks. Reavers have four dice hitting on threes. Oh, uh, we are playing a raiding call. Cool. So he's stripping off four wounds from Dagmar. Okay, so this makes more sense. It's now six dice. Six dice hitting on threes. He's going for it. Okay. He's going for it. Okay. Uh, rolling for the charge. And that's all his money tokens? Yeah. The charge is good. The charge is good. Okay, so what are the odds here? Six dice hitting on threes. You should get, like, probably four hits after the weakened token. That actually might kill four guys, you know, with the vulnerable token from uh, from Victorion. I think... I think Gamma has what is dead. The only reason why he'd be so aggressive in this unit is because of what is dead. Oh, wow, he's just playing all the cards here. So um, he has the sword. So he will gain precision. And he also has the bag. So uh, John comes panic. It's like a war cry. Okay, so we've got everything hit. No need for rerolls. Weakened token will definitely get popped, most likely. And you know what's scary is that the Relentless Attack. Here we got four hits, saving on fives with Vulnerable. The If he takes two, that will power up uh, Vicarion to twos to hit, which is pretty awesome for Relentless. Wow, he's going for the throat. Very, very aggressive. It's might, this might work. This might actually work. There's still a Tycho. Uh... One dice. Why did you roll one dice? Was it the vulnerable, I guess? You know, I didn't even see him roll four dice for his saves. I wonder why he rolled one dice. What am I missing? What little thing am I missing this time? Um... Okay, he... Oh, what is this? Oh, he's putting on a shield. Okay, so he's putting on a shield. He probably asked Gamma if he wants to use the Vulnerable. I am so confused. Why is he rolling one dice? Did he not take four hits? What? John passes the panic. He's remaking. Oh, so this is good for. Uh, oh, he still passes. It's good for Gordy because you rolled a one. Okay. Oh, it's precision. I'm so dumb. Three precisions and one save. Yes, yes, that makes sense. Okay, three precisions and one save. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, cool. Uh, and that's going to be double token. And now this is six dice hitting on twos. Six dice hitting on twos. This is where Tycho probably gets popped. Tycho probably gets popped here. Thank you, Peter. Yes, yes, yes. I didn't uh, did not realize precision. I even said it out loud, and I still forgot because I'm a dum dum. So yeah, this is actually very scary. I I applaud Gamma for the uh, cojones he's got to like go into John here, but he had the right combination of cards. He had the raiding call. And he might still have what is dead, so that even if this doesn't pull out, he may be able to resurrect. So it looks like Tycho does get popped. We get the full heal going on John. Makes total sense. Um, and I think the next thing you do is you you throw the conscripts within 12 so that uh, they can supply you, John. Um, Anthony's down to his last two cards here. And he's seen, yeah, he's seen 11 because he's seen the bottom two cards as well. So he's he's gone through a lot, a lot of cards. I wonder what cards he still has. It's interesting, too, because now that they're so close and engaged, for the watch has less value. What I would consider to be John's premier card has actually a lot less value now that John's tied up. 
Uh, okay, so he actually passes with Amon. I guess that's okay. Because at the end of the day, even if you move the conscripts up, they can't pop spite at the same time. So these guys were always going to get their second attack. Um, they have six dice. So if he kills all six, and he can't kill all six because of shield. If he kills five, he cannot kill John with uh, a field panic test. I heard a shuffle. Was that Roderick? Roderick, yes. So he... I, oh man, I wish I was paying attention. He... Um, He popped his second token. He's looking for more cards. I wonder what he's looking for. He might be looking for... Is it the Iron Price that lets you spend tokens as, as, as heal? Or maybe he's looking for what is dead. You know, maybe he's just really digging for what is dead. This is also very scary because if he finds Coordination Tactics, this unit can Coordination Tactics with... Uh, the Reavers and gain all their powerful keywords, mainly being Sundering. <laughs> Ooh, this is actually quite scary. Very, very close. All right. So, do we see Relentless get popped? Nothing else is important, I'd say, at this point, except Relentless. These two activations here are not very critical. So, yeah, let's see what happens. Maybe another Raiden Call. Oh, they're already in range. Oh, my bad. I uh, don't think so. Not in range yet. Yeah, I cannot. I cannot interact. Can okay, anyway, call it. Probably. All right, so Gamma looks like he's going to. He pivoted very cleverly to go with an inch. And yeah, he's, he's, he's going to probably grab that in time. I wonder if Ghost will come down to threaten them. Ghost might stay 14.1 away and then go in for a charge. Uh, so that's Gam's activation. He has not yet popped Relentless, which is interesting. Um, I don't know what these conscripts do. I don't think they go forward. As much as you want to take some heat off the crossbows, you can just lose way too many from the failed panic. So I think they just kind of turtle in the back. I don't think you push. You want to make sure you stay out of their threat range. And, you know, Gamma has used a lot of resources. He's used all his NCU tokens. So, oh my god. Okay. All right. Balls to the wall here, folks. So he's just marching up 10. He's saying, all right, you know, now you have to shoot conscripts and maybe the crossbows get a free pass. Bold move, Cotton. Let's see if it plays out for him. Good evening, Ilya. Yeah. <laughs> when I see a bold move, I always think of uh, either uh, Dodgeball or I think of StarCraft II uh, with Kerrigan. A bold move. It's so strange in that game, she has a British accent when she's not British as human form. Um, I think Anthony's a bit nervous. You know, he know he knows that he's going to be behind in points, and maybe he's just trying to narrow the gap. He's trying to say, okay, if you're going to get one or two points ahead of me, maybe I'll grab a point here or there with conscripts. So, we'll see. Battle Cruiser operational. True. He does have Amon. You know, this next turn is going to be a very big turn for Anthony, where he's going to get to go first, take the swords, and use Amon as well. So, yeah, Gamma did do a lot of damage, but he's not going to do enough to John this turn. It's just a matter of can he ride out Anthony's turn. And Quarish decks could be really nasty on the Iron Makers. Crit Blow Iron Makers, you know, with, uh, with Sundering, can be very, very, very scary. I think we're back to 
Gamma. Gamma should have two left. He should have... And it's very interesting that he's saving the order, because it gives him the opportunity to use Corsi Tactics and other units. Um, oh, he's using it here? I think he's popping up Corsi Tactics. And I wonder what's going to borrow. Oh, no. I was going to say gang up? No, not gang up. He does not engage with two things. Um, he can't charge with it. He can gain crit blow. I don't think he can war cry, though. Right? This has already been used. He can't use war cry. I don't think this would be a good use of it. But I could be wrong. You know? I could be wrong. If he borrows crit blow, that could be really bad. Hitting on two is a crit blow could be really, really bad. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I think we are looking at Relentless. Okay, five hits, not too shabby. Five hits, not too shabby. All right, so saving on sixes due to Sundering, and he is also vulnerable. Oh, wow, he actually rolled two sixes, but Vulnerable is going to probably erase those sixes. Vulnerable is being popped. Uh, yep, five guys go. Four guys go down because of shield. So four guys go down. Shield gets played. Was played earlier, I should say. And now we're gonna see a panic at even. No panic token. Big pass. Big pass. Okay. So yeah, we didn't see any card play. I don't think Gamma needs to use Cordish Tactics. There's no real advantage out of it. And we're now down to the Dregs. We're now down to Dagmar, Bowman, Ghost, and um, Conscripts. So the Conscripts got to edge towards here. Um, and I wonder where Ghost goes. If I was Anthony, I might send Ghost to the far left and overwhelm the Bowman with targets. If you go to the right, you might lose Ghost to Dagmar. So going to the left with an 18-inch maneuver might be the play. Plus, if you go to the left, it actually gives Ghost some potential to combo charge into Victarion and kill that unit before some weirdness happens with what is dead and stuff. So yeah, I think Ghost should just deep to the left. Really? Oh, you know why? I'm a dumb dumb, right? Because this is not 12. This is 12 from like the middle, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. You're right, you're right, you're right. I was like, he's way out, but this is 12 from the center point here. So this is, yeah, this pro it probably is uh, in range. And you're saying you, you already checked, right? So he's he knows what's going on. Plus, it's kind of irrelevant. Like, what, what Anthony probably wants to do is kind of predict where John's going to end up. So if John's going to end up further to the left somehow, he may want to move the concepts over, but of course in this position it's very hard to go to the left. He can only really retreat backwards or sideways. Okay, so Ghost is activating. I don't think you go for the Iron Makers. It sounds like a mistake, and he is deep to the left. He's got to be careful not to block his own unit's retreat. <clears throat> so he might just go forward. Ooh, what? He's doing his whole move, looks like. That was more than six. He's got to be careful. Does not want to block his own retreat. He's got to give himself at least an inch, which he does. And I think he's trying to set up a combo. You know, I think he's trying to set up a combo charge with... What? Okay, yeah, he's got 18 inches, so he's, you know, even this is... Yeah, he's got lots of room to move with. I think he's trying to set up a punch into a retreat, into maybe a ghost activation, into a charge, and finish off the Reavers. Now, I, I'm really curious what Anthony's going to do with his first action. You know, what does he do to try and guarantee the kill on... Ooh, what is this? Is this Finger Dance? Iron Price. Oh, yes, there it is. Yeah, Gamma knows the deck. He knows what to look out for. This unit is now very healthy. I was going to say, I was wondering if a crossbow shot at close range would kill this unit. Um... And now it's not, unless he feels panic. And now it's not, unless he feels panic. Okay, so Dagmar is activating. Dagmar is slowly sneaking over. 
Dagmar is letting all his goons do all the fighting, and he's slowly like, all right, guys, peace. He's going to grab this objective, score some bonus points. And this this is the route to victory. You know, just tie up the Night's Watch. Use your own healing to stay in the game and just outscore him. This is a exciting game. Gamma's making a real game out of it. I'm 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 very okay. I thought he was gonna go to the right. There's no real threats here, just conscripts, right? Yeah, there we go. There we go. Yeah, there we go. Pivot, <laughs> pivot, and just get down on that objective. Get down. Yeah. I hate copy and pasting people's lists, but let's just say I might copy and paste this list. <laughs> I just need Great Toys Box 2. And you know what? With um, with new product coming into Canada, like there's actually a hope that we Canadians will get uh, the latest stuff. You know, we actually got like a lot of the newest stuff. Um, we're still missing some things. We're missing the she bear, not the she bears. We're missing the um, the uh, polar bear riding guys from the free folk. We're missing City Watch, so we're still missing some uh, new stuff, and of course we're missing like the the quarter three from last year, which was like Hedge Knights and uh, Mother Dragons and Pikemen and stuff. But um, we did get you know Dothraki Heroes Box two. We just got Frozen Shore Chariots. We got Heroes Box two for Three Folk. We might get uh, Heroes Box two for Targaryen or for Greyjoys. So yeah, Gordy seems to be a little bit indecisive. I think he should just. Yeah, that's actually a very good angle. He's going to barely clip it. He's just trying to maximize distance between him and the Night's Watch. Uh, yeah, he can move four here and then pivot and then just, you know, barely clip it. Ten should clear his own tray. This is a very good position on Gordy's, uh, Gordy's part. You know, Dagmar's going to grab that and the woman can come over and provide some flank shots. Yeah, and, and you know what? He did some serious damage in the beginning. Thranduil, but a lot of it has been erased with Greyjoy healing and Tycho. So, it's no sure thing. You know, Car Carlo was predicting a win for Thranduil, and it was looking good, but uh, now it's like, you know, he's barely touched. He's barely touched. And he's actually moving to look at this objective. I don't think you'll ever go for this. Because Bowman might just charge in, and then the trappers will beat you up, or you just get shot, you know, a million times. I think you just shuffle. There's no way you move forward. I don't think here. But you know what? I said he wouldn't move forward with the other conscripts too, and I was wrong. So who knows? He's checking distance. It looks like it's at least 15 inches out. But again, he's he's going to be overpowered on that side. There's no way he grabs that. I don't think. Oh, yes, and cloaks, that's true. Yes, cloaks have are a big miss as well. It's so funny, because like, when cloaks were revealed, uh, Rich knows that I was like, oh my god, you just play all cloaks all the time, like three or four units of cloaks. And now, as they've FAQ'd uh, the cloaks, um, and you know we've, we've played more, it's like, yeah, maybe one, maybe two, you know, not three or four. I don't think I'd ever get three. But I might get two. I think I would get two, if they were available. So it looks like uh, Anthony is just very carefully measuring here. He wants to sidestep and stay out of range of the bowmen. But the problem is the bowmen always have the option to use a money token. So you shouldn't really measure the standard 14. You should really measure 17. And there's no need to get close, right? Like you just got to stay within 12. So this, this is probably too close, honestly. He needs to stay 17 away and he's not 17 away. If he really wants to stay safe. I mean, I've sometimes said, you know, hey, I'll let you shoot me. You got to burn a winning token? Cool. Better to burn it here than somewhere else that might be more critical. But honestly, losing conscripts is a huge deal. Because when you get to transform these four-point wounds and seven-point wounds, it's massive. So every wound you're missing here is really one less wound in the crossbows. Or John. Okay, so scoring very low for now. But next turn promises to be big as Dagmar grabs this objective, and we'll see if uh, Astra can hold on to this one over here as well. Okay, so round two. Round three, I should say. Um, 
We'll see what kind of card play happens here in terms of discards. You know, Gordy, despite having a deck of 13, has seen a lot of his cards. He's burned both of his Harlaw tokens. And... Oh, I think because Anthony activated the Conscripts last, he was not able to pop... Am I wrong? Oh, no, he was or he was already in range, right? He was already in range. That's why these um, Rangers are back up to health. Yeah, he was in range, he killed three, healed four, and that's why John's back up to almost full health. Um, yeah, the scary thing is, if, if Anthony goes for a sword into a punch, into a retreat, into a shot, into a ghost charge, that might all be for naught if Gamma has what is dead may not die. It's funny because, like, you know, um, every faction has their house words as a card, right? So the Starks of Winter is coming, the Lancers of Hear Me Roar. Technically, the, the house card for uh, Greyjoys is We Do Not Sow, but I, I often think it should be What is Dead May Never Die. <laughs> It does sound cooler. Oh, thanks, Peter. Didn't know that. Okay, good call. So he can't even do the full combo off the sword. It's got to be of John's activation. Thank you, Peter. Um, yeah, so he's going to rely on double attacks. Now... It's not the worst. You know, he might have light. Okay, sorry, did they redraw yet? They did. Anthony only drew one card. And Gamma, I think he drew two. He may have discarded some cards here. He discarded Knowledge Pain and Iron. This card's pretty scary. I, I can't remember who it was. It might have been Rich. Um, I think he said he had to face three coordination tactics because of that card, which is pretty, pretty awful. All right, so there's no real need to throw down Amon yet. It's probably good to throw down a Bowen. It's probably good to throw down Bowen. Onto the swords, I imagine. And... What do you do? This unit now hits on fours, right? And that's okay. He's just trying to stay alive and tie up John. Um, if you take the swords, he can take the bag. I don't think you two, you do the John combo now. You do the John combo when you can do a kill, but you know what? He might kill. He does have sword already up. That's nine dice into eight shots. That's 17 dice hitting on threes. 17 dice hitting on threes is like 12 hits. 12 hits if you save on fives is eight dead. Eight dead. He's got to take two panic tests. You know what? Odds are actually good now that I count. Yeah, Bone's taking the swords. He's looking for a card. Yeah, now they do the count, it's actually pretty good odds to kill this unit with with at least one failed panic. If he fails one panic, I should say. He's got to take two panic tests. If he fails one, it's good, good odds to lose the unit. Alright, so he's now seen a lot of cards. He's actually seen six, three more cards from here, so it's like he's seen 14 cards. Alrighty. So who is going to attack? Is going for the whole John combo. Ooh, I wonder if he... Ooh, I wonder if this is a mistake. I wonder if he can't retreat. Okay, we got nine dice sitting on threes. Good roll. That's a great start. Eight hits. Eight hits. The dice gods are uh, smiling upon Anthony here. Eight hits, saving on fives. Uh, not so good. Above average roll for Anthony, the under average roll for, for, for um, Gamma. So seven already go down. That's huge. He could literally die right here to a botched panic test. That would be a terrible way. Um, not, not so epic. All right, so testing on seven. <laughs> testing on seven is a pass. Okay, so the, he only needs to kill three now with the shots. But... Looking really close, I think Anthony messed up. He can't retreat an inch. He cannot retreat an inch. Yeah, I, th I think he can retreat sideways, though. He should be able to retreat to the side and get a shot, to be fair.
Yeah, for sure. Get some paint on. Would you Swift Strike? Yeah, I don't know. You know, because let's say you heal three now with the with the bag, the crossbows might just kill you. You know what I mean? Seven shots, rerolling to hit with Sundering might just kill you anyway. Maybe you just save. I would probably save it. You know, leave yourself some room to do some more explosive damage somewhere else. I think this unit is pretty close to dead. And I, yeah, it doesn't seem like he's going to Swift Strike. Oh, wait, he's popping the order. He's popping the order. Order's been popped. Okay, we are seeing a Swift Strike. He just wants to get out of the way now. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, so he realizes it can't go backwards. Uh, will it pivot? No, he can't even pivot. He can't pivot because he's an inch away from Asha. So that is legit. That is legit. And he's getting... He's just doing the minimum the minimum amount. Um, I don't think Victarion can pivot much. Because he's pretty much within an inch of the crossbows as well. So I think he's... I don't... I don't even think that's legit. Nor do I think it makes a difference, to be fair. It's still the front either way, so I don't think it actually matters. And I think he's too close to the crossbows. Definitely too close to the crossbows now. Definitely too close to the crossbows now. Yeah, what is dead? It's all about what is dead. And again, I think, I think Gordy's got it. He has very aggressively been cycling with uh, Harlaw. Okay, so Gordy's now out of range of the crossbows. The question is, is he in range of John? And does this matter? Does this matter? I mean, this actually matters. This is a flank shot for me, I think. So this is too close. Again, you know, being top table for the for the first place, I, I understand them being careful here, so this all is good. Uh, I think this is within an inch. If you click John, I think you're in range of John. Also, I think you might be in the flank. John might be in your flank in this position. Oh, uh, I guess they've agreed. Oh, great roll, great roll. He hit everything, that is gross. Anthony is on fire. Oh, these rolls. Okay, so he's got to make eight saves on fives. Oh, what? What? Oh my god! This is justice, though. To be fair, this is justice. Uh, what is this? Uh, wait, they're not dead yet. Oh, they're in the flank. They're in the flank. Oh my god. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> if that was the front, they'd be super dead. Okay, now the panic is really important. At minus one, they pass! Oh my god, they would have died. They would have died. Now, the scary thing is, Anthony also has the sword. Meaning these guys cannot do actions. Which means they can't even use Relentless, right? Because Relentless can only be used for maneuver or an attack. I mean, they can. They just take D3 once. <laughs> I, why not? Yeah, I, almost, I almost shat my pants, won't lie. <laughs> Um, they could heal, and 1D tokens are a thing, but I don't think he has... I mean, he's got the bag. He's got the bag. But then the crossbows unload, right? The crossbows would then unload. Uh, yeah, I almost cracked my pants with that roll. If he had not died to the shot, if he had got shot in the front... <laughs> I guess Gordy said, take the flank shot. You know, the thing with the flank shot is, even if you're expecting to die from the shot from the front... The flank shot increases your chance of dying from the panic. So that was a very calculated risk Gordy took there to eat a flank shot and take the extra modifier. Okay, so what does Gordy do in response? I don't think the bag saves you. But do you just pray that he, he rolls bad? Is there a better play? Oh, you know what's also scary? If Gordy does not take the horse, John can use a for the watch and get a free charge. If Gordy does not take the horse... I mean, at this point, Anthony's seen a lot of cards. He probably has for the watch. A free charge would be pretty tasty. Though, honestly, I would just blow away these Reavers, right? He's got one is dead out. What is dead out once? I don't think you even need for the watch. And you're for the watching into like... Okay, so he's going for the, for the Hail Mary heal. All right. So we should probably see... Oh, you know what? When John attacked, did he heal anything? 
Did he heal these? I don't think he healed. Did, they, did anyone notice if he healed the conscripts on the side here? Mm, yeah, he tends to forget that, unfortunately. Okay. I think you're relentless to crossbows and you just try and blow a Victorion. What's interesting is I wonder if Victorion's in their flank. <laughs> he could avoid the stand and shoot. They should shift backwards as a result to guarantee that from happening. Do we see a for the watch? I, I think the better play I don't think you need a for the watch. Because if you for the watch, you get a front charge on three plus save iron makers, who cares? I think it's better to just blow away these, these Reavers before they activate. And then you have a huge activation advantage. And Gordy poured a lot of resources. And it's only 1-0. You know, as much as he's in a good position to grab some big points, if you shoot these guys dead, shoot these guys, charge these guys, you could kill the whole left side, and you have the whole game to track down the right side. Um... Yeah, a lot of thinking. Anthony's considering what is the most optimal play here. <clears throat> okay, he's doing the relentless. <clears throat> Yeah, this is going to be a very, very big roll, you know? Odds are he doesn't kill them, I think, right? Odds are if you get, like, six hits, he should make a save, and it comes down to panic. Um, I do think you want to back up... I mean, he should just check. Maybe he's... May, you know what? No, they think about it. If I just draw the line myself... He's definitely in the front, so he doesn't need to back up. And he wants to be close so that he can shoot off uh, bowmen and shoot off iron makers. So I think that's fine. Seven shots into threes. It's a very important roll here. Uh, great start. Six hits. Anthony's rolling like crazy. Okay, so six hits. It's pretty pretty consistent. He needs to make a save. He needs one G GOT, boys. And he rolls... Three! Wow! Gordy! Clutch roll! Clutch roll! Whew! Alright, panic! Panic at even! He's already lost three. Panic at even. <clears throat> oh! He lives! He lives! I saw the one first! Wow! Wow! Okay, alright. GOT, boys. Clutch roll there from Gordy. <laughs> I think I think Rich is getting some PTSD here. Um, I mean, one more volley should kill them, right? One more volley should kill them, but they're buying precious, precious time for Iron Makers and Dagmar to, like, grab points, you know? You know what he might do? He might just send Ghost. Ghost is actually quite beast. What? Was he in John's flank? Oh, he can't even fit. And he doesn't have one tokens anyway. But yeah, if I was Anthony, I would send Ghost to kill this so that you can either shoot... I mean, the risk, I guess, is that if he's got the second one is dead, you might lose Ghost. Probably not. You know, they only have four attacks hitting on fours. You don't have a vulnerable token on you. But there are a lot of crazy Greyjoy cards that kill things, so we'll see. Yeah, I think Ghost is used to finish it off. Oh, we got some cards happening here. He's going for a very minor heal um, with uh, with Bless with Stone. This card, you know, in my limited experience with Greyjoys, is pretty tough to get maximum buy out of it. Usually, as uh, Gordy's using it for, just for a very, very minor heal. Um, and he's activating and passing, I believe, because he cannot do actions or else they will. So he's, he's getting the, the passing now, which is which is good. If he had lost that unit, he would have lost two activations. He's getting the, the activation in now. I think he's sending Ghost. Ghost has five attacks with Sundering. 
you know, Ghost has five attacks with Sundering. Yep, you've got pretty good odds to kill them. I mean, that one wound heal does make a difference. You'd have to roll pretty perfect with Ghost, like no misses, and hope he rolls only one save. The odds aren't bad. I would be pretty greedy. Oh, are we doing another shot? Oh, Anthony's like, screw this. I'm just going to try and finish him off. All right, we got all the hits. All the hits. Anthony's not messing around. He's not playing maybes. He's just focus firing. He's like, forget these guys. And they dead. They dead unless... Oh, they're gone. Okay. And we have a take the black. Uh... Oh my god! Oh my god. Oh my god. Did he just take Victarion and add a Relentless to his army? Oh my god. That is disgusting. I'm throwing up. I am throwing up in my mouth right now. Oh. Uh, oh my god. That is gross. Oh my god. He has 10 activations now versus 7. Oh Jesus. Victorian has taken the black, and now it's ten activations versus seven. That 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 ain't good. That that ain't good. Wait, hold on. Does take the black ignore um, restrictions on? Where's take the black? Oh, it does ignore. Gross. I mean, I guess I was going to say, can you put him in the crossbows and get a second relentless? But you can't, right? You don't get to overlap rules in a unit. Yeah. 1-1. One, one. Okay. So Gordy will score a few points this, this round. Like, he will probably hold the center. He'll probably grab this Dagmar. But round four is going to be really painful. It's going to be very hard to uh, to stay afloat, I think. <laughs> oh, man. He actually put the model... Of course! Of course he put the model in. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. Um, I mean, Gory just has to hang on, right? He's got to hang on and not die. He should score three points this round. He might kill these these uh, these. I mean, he's not going to kill the conscripts, but he could definitely do a lot of wounds to the conscripts. So Harla is going down on the horse. Interesting. What is so important to move here? Um, I don't think he grabbed the objective. Uh, this is an interesting angle. Oh, was he sliding towards John's unit? Okay, so he's just barely. Okay, he's just barely going to like get behind the objective so that Harlock can pick it up, or Dagmar can pick it up. Cool. Um, I don't know if I like this. I don't know what he could have done otherwise, though, honestly, because he. I think you need this unit to participate. This is the finger dance ironborn bowmen that are in the flank of you know things. They're so far away; they're not participating. Maybe you use the... Ah, I don't know, it's tough. I was going to say, maybe you maneuver this forward, but then you do put yourself kind of in John's threat range, perhaps. It's hard to say. Anthony has three cards. He could just take an Amon onto the envelope and do some extra healing. Oh, I think so too, uh, Chris. I think that once... Night's Watch get toned down. I think all eyes are going to be on Targs if they don't change much. And I think um, I think Greyjoys. I think Greyjoys are really, really scary with Heroes Box 2. They just do, like, they do almost everything. They don't do Cav, right? They don't do Cav, but they do almost everything else. Um, so I think, yeah, Greyjoys are going to be... I, and I think they're going to escape the uh, microscope for this update. No one's really complaining about Greyjoys too much. But uh, yeah, they're, they're four-point activations, great NCUs, great attachments, you know, 
they're going to be the next thing, I think. So yeah, Aemon goes down for the heal and draw cards. Looks like he healed up uh, the conscripts. And this is where it gets really disgusting. Like, he can literally do one, like, free, free heals now all over the place. The four pointers are ridiculous. Absolutely. Okay, so we predict Wendemir is going to take the crown probably at this point. Nothing is super important. Um, Wendemir should probably take the crown to get another token. He might go for a bow shot before the conscripts charge him. But honestly, the conscripts... I mean, yeah, the conscripts are very in range. Why are they vulnerable? Oh, he put it on with um, with uh, Amon on the envelope. So yeah, we're going to see a one token get made. Cool. Now it's back to... You know what? This is probably a 2 plus charge. But you should definitely do it. You know, you get them in combat. Grab that token. Oh my god, and you weaken them. Right? So they're never going to hurt you back. Never gonna give you up. All right, so yeah, I think uh, you just YOLO in those conscripts. So let's check the distance here. It's probably six, so it's a seven. So it needs a two plus. Two plus. You don't care about the damage. You just care about grabbing the objective. Oh, he's trying to make it. Yeah, it's a six, not a five. So six becomes seven because of rough. He needs a two plus to make it in. He's got no cards. He's drawn a lot. He's seen sixteen of his cards. He knows the bottom three due to Bowen. All right, two plus. He's in and does not care about the damage. He just wants to grab the objective. You know what? Yeah, the weakened token is going to very is going to blunt the damage. But if they fail the panic test, they will not only take more damage; they'll pass the token off to the bowman. The bowman just needs to sneak one wound in with their melee attack. Not impossible. Do we see any cards? He might actually pull out a light for rerolls. Looks like not. He doesn't care. Saving all the good cards for John and the Hunters. Or John and the Crossbows. Uh, wow, good roll too for his attack roll. Anthony's been rolling really, really well. So five hits, saving on fives. Best Bowman ever. And he did preload a Vulnerable with uh, Amon on the envelope. Should be quite a bit of damage here. Uh, we see four. You might as well pop it. Honestly, why not? You know, just push all the damage you can now. All right, so five wounds. That's going to be a lot. He's going to be down to his last five guys. And Panic on eight. So actually, these conscripts might just overpower these bowmen anyway. Oh, and you know what? With Gordy's positioning, he can't even retreat. He can retreat sideways with a big roll. They fail their Panic and take an extra one, looks like. Okay, still bad. Yeah, he can't retreat backwards. He needs a big roll to retreat to the side. But if he stays in combat, these conscripts will grind him down. And they're weakened now, too. Yeah, that, uh, it's not looking good, folks. Not looking good. Um, whoop, see a lot of arrows. Yeah, none of these actions left on Gordy are particularly crazy important, I don't think. He did pop a Wendy token. He did pop a Wendy token. I wonder... Oh, it's for the heal. Okay, it's keep him alive and draw a card. Oh, it's pretty desperate, because I don't know if two wounds are going to save this unit. Like, these conscripts will just... You know, these have to kill a couple, and the panic will do the rest. So he healed, and he's going to activate. Okay, this is actually very important. He only... Oh, he's doing a war cry. Okay, smart. This is actually... Okay, man, I, I, I got to respect how scrappy Gordy is. A war cry is likely to do a wound, and the panic token will probably feel panic and flip the token over. So that's very cool. Oh, no! <laughs> he failed the war cry. Oh, no. Oh, that is, that is too bad. He failed the war cry. All right, here we go. Four dice hitting on fours. Uh, three hits. Weaken will re-roll that, I'm sure. Weaken is still three hits. Nice. And now we got three saves on fives. So a panic test will ensue. This panic test is huge for token flipping. So one contract goes down. 
uh, no card play, and now panic on seven. So good odds to pass. He's already spent one fire. He might have a second fire. Oh, they fail and take four wounds. This unit has now been crippled. Does he have the second fire? He is reaching. He has it. He has the second fire. Okay. You should probably re-roll all of it. Right? Rolling seven is better than rolling a four plus. Oh, he still fails! Oh, dude. Keeping it interesting for us. So three contrams go down. I didn't know that the melee attacks also share tokens. Divide the spoils. Wow, it's both. I had no idea. I guess I never see Bowman in combat. So that was very big, very big flip. So Gordy's going to score four points this round, guys. Gordy's going to be up 5-1. Is there a hope? Is there a hope for the Maritimes? Gordy's going to be up 5-1. What do you think? Is this game over? Gordy just to hang on a little bit. Wow, he might run away. It's going to be 5-1. John can steal. John can steal, but he's going to be charging to 3+. plus. Oh, no. That's going to be 2 plus save Iron Makers. That's 2 plus save Iron Makers in the wood. John needs to roll like a god to steal. I don't know. Gordy? Gordy? That panic? Very scrappy. I got to say, very scrappy. No, no give up in Gordy. He cannot last to the end of the game, but if he can just end the game... You know what's really scary? Gordy's first next. What if the Bowmen attack in combat? Yes, they're morale 5. And they're in the wood with a token, so they have a 2 plus save currently. Now, Victorion in the Hunters can do some crazy plays too. He can't quick fire this round, he already spent it. But... They also... That's true. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> I say they've got good morale and they just feel war cry. So, Gordy, going first next round. They Yeah, they took the black. So now it's 10 activations versus 7. However, Gordy is on all the objectives. He's going to score 4 points and he's going to be up 5-1. And he's going first next. The Bowman, with a war cry, can kill the conscripts. That's going to put Gordy to 6 and if he can hang on, he can actually win next round. I am actually thinking Gordy could just win the game next round. Like, Thandril is killing stuff, but he's really far behind in points. Right? If the contrips go down and Gordy hangs on, and let's be honest, you know, um, Gagmar is not really in danger. Uh, I think Gordy can just win the game next round. That panic fail with a reroll was huge. Um, Dagmar's coming on. Dagmar is about to jump on the objective. The objective is in front of the Bowman. Gordy very carefully angled so that he just cut across behind the objective. And he's going to pivot. He pivoted to face. So Dagmar is just set up to grab that objective. Yeah, Dagmar hasn't activated yet. He's going to. So it looks like the Bowman have the objective, but Gordy. Just skimmed it with the Bowman and pivoted in front. So he's going to score four. <laughs> oh, Peter, you're too hard on yourself. You are too hard on yourself, sir. Yeah, so I, I actually think Gordy might sneak this win. In fact, I, I would even put him at a favorite to win this game. I think those conscripts, if they get Warcried, are going to get killed. And you know what? There are some crazy... Issue is Dagger might not be able to turn and face after the march. Um, maybe. Maybe. Man. Oh, man. I'm actually very excited. I think John has to get the heck out of there, and he needs to go after Dagmar. <laughs> he needs to go after, He can ignore the Iron Makers. It's a, it's a trap. He needs to go after Dagmar. He needs to use that... Um, Ooh, and I think he realizes the same thing. Now, Asha is in a position to try and, like, hang on to him. Okay, 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 okay. 
he I think he needs to activate John last. He needs to do all his John things last. If Asher charges you, you got to use Victorian's Relentless to swift strike out and then put yourself in a position to attack Dagmar. You have to ignore Asha and go after Dagmar at this point. Dag Asha is like a trap here. Totally a trap. Oh, I don't like that he's activating the Rangers. Unless he's got some cool play that I can't predict. But I think the safer play is to let Asha... Either Asha charges you and you Swift Strike out, or you Relentless out, and then, you know, potentially attack Dagmar. So this was his Relentless from Victarion, I believe. Yeah, I don't like it because Asha can still charge you, and now you can only retreat with your with your action. I think Thendril might lose. I actually think he might lose. If he is not able to like contest Dagmar right now, I think he's going to lose. I see those conscripts dying, and I see Gordy hanging on. Okay, but he realizes. Okay, so he realizes he did a very tight angle. And the problem again is Asha. I mean, the scary thing here too is that he might get tag teamed now by Asha and Dagmar. And Gang Up is no joke. Gang Up is no joke. And those Bowmen with Finger Dance are now going to come into play. Gordy's positioning is pretty epic, I gotta say. I was not happy with those Bowmen at first, but like, like he knows that as long as Dagmar is good. He's safe, and those bowmen are covering him. And now John realizes he's got to scuttle over. And yeah, the bowmen are now going to actually get some shots off with finger dance. I, I actually think Thrangel's. I think Gordy's favored to win. Now, if I mean, I'm doing what ifs here. The concepts hadn't failed. Gordy would have scored three, so it'd be four two. That's not horrible, but five one is really big gap. Um, I'm sure... Okay, so I didn't... I'm not close. I'm actually looking at the chat right now. Um, so the way maneuvering works is you are allowed to come within an inch as long as you don't end up within an inch. So I imagine he just, you know, got as close as he could, skimmed past six, and then the pivot cleared him. But yeah, you are allowed to come within an inch as long as you don't end up within an inch. And I, I mean, I think at this point you just pivot, right? You just pivot with, with Dasha, charge, you know, John in the flank, get some damage in, and then he's going to eat bow shots. I don't, I don't like that move from Anthony. I don't see... <clears throat> I mean, she could... Oh, I'm so dumb. Thank you, Mitch. I just realized Mitch is pointing out Asha can't see because um, you can pivot through enemy trays. Yes, you can. Uh, sorry. Thank you, Mitch. Um, I, for some reason, thought that Asha was engaged with John and that she could pivot after he did his thing, but they're not engaged. So, yes, she's locked and can't see. Okay, so this is great. This is actually really good. This is really good. I was worried that she was going to pivot and charge him to the flank. Um, oh my god, did he? He did pop the Winnie token. He popped the Winnie token in the Bowman. So there's no Winnie token to get that flank charge. And now Dagmar is like sweating. He's like, oh god, I can't grab this because John is breathing down my neck. So, okay, we have a game. Anthony has reprioritized. He understands where the danger is. Okay, so now I think he's safe. I think he's safe because he's in a position to either charge Bowman, grab the objective, or deny Dagmar. And he's got a fairly significant activation advantage, I believe. He still hasn't tapped aim on. So it's back to Gordy. Gordy's down to three activations. And um, Anthony has four. He's got Ghost, Conscripts, John, and Amon. So he can always outweigh Gordy. So yeah, I think I think he's, he's understood the danger. And uh, he's going to be able to save himself. I wonder what Gordy can try and do to stop this from happening. 
Oh my god, what if he just marches in front, right? What if he offers these constantly Bowman as a sacrifice? He says, I'm gonna just march in front, let you charge these guys. Uh hmm. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay. This is max dice, okay. We don't have a pillage token. He has two cards in hand. I don't know how I feel about this. I don't know how I feel about this. Dagmar is so squishy. Now, for anyone coming in late, um, the Ranger Hunters do not have quick fire. They've already popped it. So John will only get nine dice, but he has Victarion, so if he charges in, he's also going to make that unit vulnerable. I think they're dead. Doesn't John just charge in and kills them? I mean, he has two cards. One of them's probably the other one is dead. I mean, you are body blocking, but I think you just lose the unit, and then, and then you know, John's just going to clean up the archers next round. Like, John has nine dice... Hitting on threes with re rolls, and then Dag uh, his Victorion makes Dagmar vulnerable. So and he's and they're saving on sixes and the morale eight. Like, yeah. Oh, there's disrupt. I forgot about disrupt. Good call. Good call. He may not get eight hits. Right. Nine dice hitting on fours of re rolls. What's the math say? Three out of four. Twenty seven over four. Twenty seven over four is not quite seven hits. Not quite seven hits. But still, you still do it. They probably feel panic, you know. And you know what? If the Bowmen grab it, they're only getting one point. So it'll be 4-1. Four, 4-1 one. Four, one, and then, yeah. He does not have Harden. That is uh, Baylor, the other commander that Gordy's using. <laughs> All right. John is going in. I don't think I saw a roll. Okay, this roll is very significant. <clears throat> oh, barely, barely in. <laughs> barely not disorder, I should say. And this is significant. Okay, so nine days hitting on fours. I think my 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 calculations my my calculations say that it should be seven hits when it's all said and done. Uh, hitting on fours, disrupt, disrupt. They're forgetting disrupt. I see a three. Okay, good. They fixed it. He's already got six hits each. Oh, boy. He just needs two more. Even one more with a panic test fail is going to kill him. Okay. He only got seven. Hey, the math worked out. Seven saves on sixes with vulnerable. It's going to come down to the panic. Odds are good that he dies. But it's not... The worst. Okay, so one passed. Vulnerable is going to be popped for sure. He needs every bit of damage here to get through. Oh, he rerolled into a six. <laughs> All right. If he passes panic, we have a game? Question mark. If he passes, we have a game. Leadership eight. D three damage. Okay, here we go. Oh, he lives! He lives with one wound. Wow, that six into a six kept him alive. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. That was nuts. That was nuts. <laughs> I can't believe he lived. Wow, he rerolled the six into a six and he took minimum damage from the panic. That was very significant. Wow. Okay, um, so the Bowman can grab it. So it's okay. It's still not looking good for Anthony. He's going to be down four one, but it's not not as bad anymore for sure. Interestingly, you know, it's going to be round four, and we've not yet seen for the watch. I wonder if Anthony's been actually putting it in the bottom of his deck, realizing that it, it hasn't been that important. Um, yeah, I don't know. Ash is now slow. She should just probably pivot. I mean, 
Does she pivot and then first activation charge Anthony? I don't think so, right? Because you can't leave the swords open. Because the swords will let him retreat out and then, like, do some shenanigans again with John. Maybe she goes for the crossbows in the flank. But yeah, pivoting to charge John is not good. Because he can just duck out with swift retreat. Uh, so, Gordy's down to Iron Makers and Bowman. Yeah, so deciding what to do the Iron Makers, that is tough. That is tough. Um, I'm pretty sure Ghost doesn't do anything cool in this scenario, right? Doesn't count as ranks or anything like that. Um, yep, yeah, nope, does not count his wounds as ranks, so he cannot strip the objective off the Iron Makers, thankfully. Iron Makers are actually coming for the crossbows, which is interesting. Oh no, they're backing up. They're backing up. Stain. Oh, that makes total sense. They're backing up, but you can see like this got such a fat footprint. I mean, yeah, he can he can relentless and draw line of sight, and then that'll be that for hiding. And we'll see, you know, what does what zone does Gordy actually take? I think he still takes a sword, right? Oh, but now that he backed up, he'll be out of Warcry range. He was barely in range before, so he'll be out of range now. And that might keep these conscripts alive. <sighs> yeah. But you know what? I mean, I understand where Gordy's coming from. If you just eat repeated volleys from crossbows, you will melt, even if you're an Iron Maker, right? So... Oh, interesting. So they're checking line of sight. He is technically... I can't even see this artifact here. So he's... Can he see? I think he can. It's a bit hard to tell with all these circles, but I think he can barely see. And he's in range. But he's not in the front arc. He's not in the front arc. So he can't get shot. I wonder... This arc... This, this is really throwing me off this uh, circle here. Oh, what is this? Another Stan United Brothers. Who is he going to... Oh, he... <laughs> Look at this bizarro world, people. <laughs> I mean, this is the play. You keep those conscripts alive. This is totally the play. But what a bizarro world we live in where crossbows become conscripts. <laughs> oh, man. It's true. He didn't need Warcry before. <laughs> We are living in the bizarro world where conscripts downgrade. I uh, sorry, crossbows downgrade into conscripts. This is so funny. Um, okay, so that was Gordy. We're back to um, Anthony. He has three activations left. This one doesn't matter, right? Bowmen are obviously going to shoot into John. What should Ghost do? <clears throat> I mean, honestly, I think Ghost deeks to the right, and you can do some combo dual activations with John. I think you just ignore you ignore these guys. Conscripts and crossbows polish off the bowmen. And John and Ghost just finish off the right side and you leave Iron Makers just to hide in the wood. Hmm. Interesting. I would have just gone 18 hard down this way. Uh out of line of sight, I should say. And he's looping around. Oh no, he's gonna help out the conscripts on this side. Okay. Okay. Fair. I guess this really, you know, seals their fate, right? Because shooting into combat, to be fair, is risky. You you will cause yourself more panic, and they take extra damage. So I, I can see this play being a good... Yeah, this is a good play. I like it. I like it. Okay, cool. And he's just relying on John. He's like, okay, John should be able to finish Dagmar, no problem. And then he can just body these guys on his own, too. Um... All right, we're going to get a shot. Will we see some real damage? Now, they do have uh, Finger Dance, so he might he might kill a rank. With a good hit roll, he might kill a rank. Oh, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. Did he? Is he maneuvering? I'm sure he could have shifted, right? He is in range of these conscripts. He might just... Uh... But I feel like he's maneuvering. Like, he shouldn't be able to pivot. If he wants the shot, he just should... Ooh. Oh, did he miscalculate? Oh, he is off. He needs to maneuver. 
Wow. Uh oh, they didn't save location. Uh oh, that's not good. Uh, yeah. They might just agree, because I know that obviously there was intent involved. He might just say you can shift and shoot. We'll see. So, yeah, they're agreeing that he can just pick it up. And the question is, does he get a shot? I, I guess they're agreeing he can't get a shot, that he blocked his own tray somehow. That seems like too bad, because he had total control over this unit's positioning, right? So, yeah, maybe just alone. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> it's just alone. That's true. We'll give you some crossbows, but you'll give, give them back with interest. <laughs> okay. Um, we got Contrips over here. They did a free heal. These guys did a free heal. And as Mitch says, they're returning the favor here with a free heal. Um, these guys have already popped their order. Uh, they're probably just going to hang back out of range of these of these cross of these bowmen. Maybe you don't though. You know, maybe you actually push forward with the conscripts and you say, "Yeah, shoot me, shoot me, and don't shoot John." Totally cool. John will heal us anyway with uh, Rally Cry. You know. Okay, so this is going to be the end of the round. Um, it will be 4-1. You know, it's 4-1. So it's not, not like... It's it's not looking good, won't lie. But it's not over. Not over. So John, uh, Anthony will draw 1, and Gordy will draw 1 as well. Interesting positioning here. I wonder why he's facing this way. I feel like he is risking a flank shot. Is he trying to avoid getting charged by something? Like, nothing can see him. Yeah, just go that way, man. Just go that way and give yourself some options to charge those bowmen. That is the play. If anyone's curious about the stack of cards, Anthony's got your sword, shield, and watcher, plus Victarion. And, uh, oh, it's so gross. I mean... This round, round four, is going to be the deciding round, right? If Gordy cannot make big plays, and it's going to be very hard, I'm not criticizing him, if he can't make big plays and stay in the game here, round five will for sure be over for him when Anthony goes first. And Anthony's in a very strong position with, like, ten activations here versus seven. And there's no way for Gordy to even get more activations because he lost his Relentless unit. I'm very interested to hear uh, the the uh, interviews and just talk about, you know, was it's kind of unfair to ask. Do I think it was right to throw Reavers down the middle, down like straight at the crossbows? It almost worked. It almost worked. You know, just because a play didn't work out doesn't mean it was the bad play. It was a bad play, right? Because arguably, if you if you just circle and wait, the cro the crossbows will eventually get you. You know, so it's just a very very tough matchup. Okay, so now unfortunately for Gordy, taking the swords with the Ironborn Bowman is not so good. No, oh, but you know what? Maybe it's still the play. Oh, we got a card coming down. Cornish and Tactics. He's gonna steal Ash's Warcry, I imagine. What else do you get to steal from that unit? Uh, that should be a pass, because you also get to use her um, extra um, morale bubble. And maybe it's a shot? The funny thing about the shot is that you also risk killing Dagmar with the panic test. Oh boy. No guts, no glory. I think he's shooting into John. I mean, I think he's going to just risk the panic test. He may have drawn a second what is dead, but... Yeah, you gotta, you gotta do it, you know? Oh, is this melee? Is this the trappers attacking? Yes, it is. Okay, it's trappers attacking. He's not risking the shot. Okay, cool. And he's not yet played Watcher. Though, at this point in the game, Watcher is not so important. Everything's already kind of engaged and wrapped up. So the, uh, yeah, not too shabby. Two hits from uh, Dagmar's unit. Rerolls? Where'd rerolls come from? Is that a crit? 
That's finger dance. How did he get a reroll? Hmm. It's two dead so far. Does Dagmar give you? Some oh, martial training. There we go. Martial training for the reroll. Got it. Okay. Panic at. So he fails all three. Uh, there's a shield. So he only loses two actually. So shield means he loses two, and um, yeah, you know, panic at even with a panic token. That is currently a big fail, and he's played both fires. That is actually a token. That is actually a token for Dagmar's unit. Wow. Okay. So there's lots of ways to kill Dagmar here. He can kill him with Victoria. He can kill him with the Crown Zap. Oh, what is this? Watcher on the wall. Something else gets to move. Maybe he kills you with Conscripts in the flank. I don't know if they have the movement to do that, to be honest. He might move this unit forward to shoot the Iron Makers. That does make sense. Oh, he might try and shoot Dagmar from here. Oh, no, he's just going towards the Iron Makers. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, that's good. He's going to get two volleys now on these Iron Makers, who are slow and cannot charge through the wood very effectively. Yeah, and with the shift, he'll definitely be able to uh, get that shot. Um, cool. So it looks like Anthony is going to just try and table at this point. You know, um, like you won't table this round, but if the game doesn't end, he will probably end up tabling. Um, I wonder what he does to kill Dagmar. So Dagmar can spend the pillage token to make the unit weakened, which means the Victorian attack may not kill him. Right? It's going to be 7 dice, 8 dice with a sword, 8 dice hitting on 4s. He should get... You know, he should still kill him. Unless you roll bad, right? Because it's... I think it's still 8 dice with a sword. You hit 4 times. Weaken meets you hit twice. He's got to make 2 6 plus saves on one guy. So I would probably pop Victarion or maybe take a heal. Oh, we see another thing happening here. Another coordination tactics. Is he going to get armor off this? Is that how it works? No. He can get armor, but you only get one armor, so it's a 5 plus. It might, is that how it works? <clears throat> yeah, Bogler, it. I mean, I'm just quoting Mickey here, Mickey from uh, Sunwise for stats, you know. He crushes in tournament play, right? He went really, really far at the London GT. He went really, really far at the Scottish GT. I think he went uh, four and one, or sorry, five and one each each each, each tournament. And um, he did lose to Starks at the Scottish GT. Uh, but I think the only faction he's really worried about is, is Night's Watch. It's really tough. It's really tough for most factions, really. Unless you're playing targaryens maybe greyjoys you know and and you know if you watch this some ways of our stats video from monday uh carlo who's a very very high ranked player in the world um played um tom tom bell who was in the chat earlier and after that game you know carlo admits he he made some mistakes here and there but he also feels like in that matchup targaryens versus night's watch you know if if the night's watch player plays perfect it's it's really hard to win, um, and that's always a tough call. You know, like when when I play, I never assume my opponent like is going to make a mistake. I assume they're going to make the best moves possible. So it's kind of grim. It's kind of grim, and that's why Night's Watch are going to be target numero uno for the uh, uh, the update, hopefully, which is supposed to drop end of this month. We'll see. Uh, all right, so it's. Yes, it's Anthony's turn, and I think Dagmar popped a pillage token to make the unit weakened and panicked, and now Anthony's trying to figure out what is the best way to kill him. So I was thinking, okay, so yeah, a Victorian low roll could mess up. Maybe you just take the bag, you know, maybe just take the bag and do some, some cool heals. Like this unit is actually kind of close to death. 
And you're not in a rush, you know? He's going first. You're going to have three, four, last seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, you're going to literally have four activations after he's all done. So you can just take it slow, you know? Just take it slow. Take the bag. Xanthi's really thinking hard here. <clears throat> And of course, as Mitch says, you can also just Conscript Heal. <clears throat> but you know what? The bag also really limits what Gordy can do. And he has, you know, two crippled units here. He would like the bag for himself too, I'm sure. Yeah, Anthony's really thinking hard. I think he feels like the, so uh, the Victorian attack is a gamble, which is why he doesn't want to do it. Do you steal the objective if you have more ranks? Um. <laughs> yep, you do. So these conscripts will auto steal this objective. Oh, what's going on? We see a heal. Okay, so he's going for the safe play here. He's going to heal three with Bowen, saving Amon for heals later down the road. He's going to draw some cards. He played a card. He played Watcher, that's right. He played Watcher. Um, he played Watcher on the crossbows, that's right. Okay, cool. And Anthony is at a point, it's round four. So he, okay, <laughs> I was going to say. Yeah, so the only card he doesn't know is the top card of his deck here. Okay. Uh, all right, cool. So we have Roderick draw two, put down a token. Uh, he's reapplied the Weaken. Makes total sense. He's drawn through most of his deck as well. Drawn through 13 cards. Anthony's drawn through 15, but he's seen the bottom four. I'm really curious. There's so much to ask, but I feel like at the end of this game, they're probably going to both get tired, especially Gordy off on the East Coast. Um, Gamma went first, right? So he'll always get to put down Wendemir. So you don't really need to go to the board. I don't think there's an Oh, you know what you can do? I just realized. Um, I don't think he can because he's too far away. No, he can't. I would maybe take the horse with anyone. Amon, let's say, right? Heal some dudes, whatever. Back up an inch and just shoot Dagmar dead. You still have the John charge and the Victorian attack to finish off these bowmen. Uh, and we see some base going down. I think he's just shooting. Yeah, he just you know this is a uh, this is totally for free. This is not significant. He's gonna wait for the bowman to attack before he counterattacks. He doesn't want to lose the objective again. Uh, this is nine dice. Oh, I think he's going for Victorian. Yes, he's going for the Victorian Relentless. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, he's at full ranks now. He's playing light for positive rerolls, so this is gonna really even things out. He, sh he sh this should be the end of deck. Of oh, oh, this should be the end of. Uh, Zombie Shakespeare. So re-rolling the misses. He's changing that to a four because of Disrupt. Is this the end of Zombie Shakespeare? So we got six hits. Rerolls for Weaken should bring it down to three. That's more than enough to kill Dagmar. Oh, only two. Okay, two is still enough. We need to see boxcars here. Game of Thrones, boys! Nah. So Dagmar goes down. It's another point. An activation down as well. Oh, he's got the second one is dead. The bad news is he's got to make a panic test on eight. Oh, so they come back to life first. Oh, with one. Brutal. And now he's got to pass a panic on eight. Which passes! Dagmar lives. Dagmar stands for now. Dagmar stands. Yes. <laughs> Summons conscripts with expos. <laughs> yep, yep, Bogler, not, uh, oops. Yes, he truly is zombie Shakespeare. Uh, so now he's taking the shot. Okay, so he is kind of pulling the whole combo. He's only going to get 
a John charge now on these Bowmen. So Dagmar's dead. There's no coming back from that one. Um, he's already gotten rid of Take the Black. So we're down to a John charge, but honestly, a John charge, while it will not kill this unit, it will steal the objective off them for sure. Right? He'll. He may lose a guy or two to the shots. But A, he's got Aim on to heal. And B, he's got conscripts. Yeah, so this is actually Gordy's NCU. So, you know, Anthony can wait as long as he wants to throw down Amon onto the crown. We see a card being thrown down? Nope. We do. Kraken's Wrath. Oh, okay. So these guys will get rerolls and precision. And they're vulnerable. That's a lot of buffs. Rerolls and precision. Okay. And they healed. What? Oh, he popped the Wendy token, I guess. Did he heal? I don't know. Uh, Rerolls. Rerolls. GOT boys. Do you not get rerolls? Oh, it's his own. I got messed up. He doesn't get rerolls. That's his own guy holding the sword. And the rub salt in. Okay, he passed, but then failed with rerolls. He takes one wound. Yeah, only one hit. That was that was sad. <clears throat> he only got precision from that. Yeah, I was staring at the red Tycho, and I still thought it was Anthony for some reason. Uh, I do. Oh, there's no panic. Is it because of shield? No. He took a wound, right? He took a wound. I don't know what all this measuring is about. He took a wound and he should owe Gamma a panic test here. And where are the we do not sows? Or was that we do not sow? It was we do not sow. And that's why he healed. Okay. All the reasons are coming together now. Um, but yeah, I feel like... Okay, here's the panic test. Okay, so he took the guy off. Panic on seven. Big fail. Four wounds go down. Huge. And there's no one in range for a panic. Or, oh, they are. They were checking 12. Oh, wow. Oh, they're out. They're out. <laughs> they're out. <laughs> Cordy preloaded. And was like, wait, wait, my range? No. This is kind of scary. Um, this is where you may want to throw the aim on to heal two, I guess? Gordy has no hand. Ooh. Gordy has no hand. He does get another attack. Um, and the concepts are weakened. Interesting. What is the best thing for Anthony to do here to stay alive? He could lose those conscripts, right? One attack and a failed panic will kill them. And he's played both fires. He can't kill all the bowmen. There's no way to heal except with Amon. I, I guess you go Amon. You know, you just pray for the Amon. But he doesn't seem to be rushing to the tactics board with Amon. He might be like, okay, that's actually not that important. You know, Ghost will chew. You know, even if you kill these conscripts, you get a point. Ghost will, over time, kill that unit anyway. I guess. He knows that what's really important is to get John onto this objective. Now John is loaded. He's got watch from the wall. So he's gonna get movement seven and rerolls of the charge. So he's gonna be in, but he's only gonna get one set of attacks. Maybe you crown zap these bowmen just to whittle them down to make sure John grabs this objective. Yes, so as a result, Ghost is also loaded with all the things. Yes. Okay, so Amon does go for the heal. Heals two. And he's going to crown zap here. I feel like um, I would crown zap these ones. You really want to ensure that John will cripple this unit. But, you know, it, it's kind of like not a big difference, I guess. Gordy fails, loses two, and he passes the token over, which is important. I mean, it may not be important. I'm sure Gordy will now just reactivate an attack and try and steal it back, probably. Yeah, nothing else is too important. Like, this bow shot might be important, maybe. The problem is the bow shot 
we'll kill a couple of guys, the conscripts heal, John goes in, blah blah blah. Yeah, I, I, it's either attack here, yeah, he, because he's out-activated so heavily, like, he's just can't keep up at this point. You know, it's hard to make good choices because Anthony will always get a reaction. All right, we got four dice sitting on fours, no cards. Ooh, good roll, three hits. He could kill everybody. He could kill everybody. That's a good start. He could kill them all. Oh, the shield comes out. I wonder where the shield was earlier. The shield comes out, and he's not going to die anymore. He's going to lose two, but he can. Uh, he will not go down. There's no crown zaps, nothing funky. Panic test on seven. He's been rolling pretty bad in his panic tests. He may not lose too many guys here. He passes, though. Big pass, 11. Uh, so he does not lose the objective because he does not have less ranks. And now he can just do the whole left side, right? He can... But is there a reason... Now that they've activated, he should just charge John in. I guess the concern is that if you charge John in... He should heal John, charge John in. He will surely kill four dudes. Oh, we've got a four of the watch. Uh, I don't even know what this card really does since he already rerolls charges. But I guess for the next round, he'll get a free charge. Um, yeah, you just, you just charge in. You should probably kill four of these bowmen. You'll steal the objective. He should also probably heal. There is a... A world where these bowmen strip the objective back. There is a world where that happens. <clears throat> All right, uh, that's funny, Bogbear. All right, so we got uh, so they're vulnerable because of Victoria. This is 7, 8 for John, 9 for Sword. So 9 dice hitting on 3s, and the unit should be vulnerable because of Victarion. Uh, decent start, to be expected. 6 hits, rerolls into 8 hits, which is statistically expected. 8 saves on 5s, but again, they should be vulnerable because of Victarion. Probably won't matter, but just saying. And it literally didn't matter. Wow. Okay, he loses all eight. That's two ranks and a panic test. Yeesh. Wah wah wee wah. Interestingly, I may have put for the watch on the conscripts so that they can charge in. They pass. Okay, so they remember the vulnerable token now. But I guess for the watch on John gives you options to for the watch ghost, I guess. As if he needs the help, you know, as if Ant needs the, uh, the options here. Um, cool. So he's going to steal the objective off. So let's just count, right? At this rate, now Anthony scores three, and it's going to be five, five. And that is pretty much game, right? Because now that Anthony's going to be scoring more points and have more activations, he will surround the Iron Makers with John and the crossbows and kill them. So this game's pretty, pretty wrapped up. Um... The big bullet seems to be the death of the Reavers, and and Gordy did put a lot of work in just keeping them alive. I don't know if there's another way to play it. I don't know if he played it wrong. I, I don't know if there's a better you know a better thing to do. So John is retreating. Uh, he doesn't get a shot. He's retreating to what end? I mean, isn't their melee profile worse? Their melee profile is marginally worse. I don't know. I don't know. I guess retreating gives you the option to use for the watch, right? For the watch. So yeah, I can see that. I, I thought that, you know, their range attack is a little bit better, but he's really not that worried. And being out of combat gives him chances to recharge in and do some nasty stuff. Look at this deck of cards. Look at this deck of cards he's got of John here. One, two, five are his own, and he stole the carry on. Yeah. 
Yeah, it was a good fight. That's true. That's true. Uh, I think it's a Warcry. Warcry going off on John just to get some extra damage in with the Bowmen. Bowmen are going to shoot. Uh, I've never seen their last profile. Four shots. Wow. Pretty good for a four-point unit, I got to say. Uh, oh, they're charging. They're charging in. Yes, that's the way to do it. And honestly, your your odds are actually better because you get rerolls to hit. So even though you got one less dice, your rerolls to hit are significantly better. Uh, can he do it? I mean, yes, in theory. Oh, not with that roll. Oh, oh boy. Three. Oh, he can't. He can strip it off with a failed panic test. Oh my god. And he's panicked. This might happen, folks. Oh, he loses two. Shields up, so he loses two. Okay, it's all about the panic. Wow. <laughs> Gordy, scrappy to the end. I like it. Panic on five with a reroll. Can John lose? He's he's already played both his fires. So no rerolls for Anthony. Oh, boy. Oh. All right, that was the worst roll Gordy could see. He's going to pop the panic token. And he passes. Oh my god, he rolled marginally worse. 12 into 11. Disgusting. They might call it here. I don't know. They might play it out, but... Uh, I mean, you should you, you should play it out as much as my back says, please stop. But, uh, <laughs> you know, you never know what might happen, I guess, right? Gordy is very scrappy. He's young, hungry, and scrappy, just like his country. Alrighty. Uh, what's left? Uh, what's left is the inconsequential stuff. Okay, so we've got... Yeah, I think... Yeah, okay. So, yeah, we got conscripts. They doing a free heal onto the crossbows, because why not? Um, we're going to see a couple of dice chuck out with a weakened token. And then Ghost is going to come in for the finish. He's, he's like, maybe I need a rear charge, you know? Flank charge is not enough. Need a rear. Uh, and I forgot he moves seven. That's right, he moves seven because of Watcher. Looks like he will get a rear. Oh, Ghost is just going in now. Okay. So yeah, they agreed he's got enough movement to get to the rear with movement seven because of Watcher on John. Uh, I mean, the panic is significant. It's minus two versus minus one. You know, so it, it, he's not wrong to <laughs> to maximize his advantage here. Um, and five dice, yeah, five dice. This unit might might just die. Okay, we got oh, bless you. We got three into all the hits, five hits, saving on sixes. Bless you again. Saving on sixes, GOT boys. Ah, loses all five. He's down to the last bowman. Bowman at minus two. Needs a 10. 10 to hold the line. Hold the line, boys. Nope. Ah, uh, that's another point. They might just call it after this. Right? Uh, it's going to be 6-5. And, and Asha might even panic and drop the objective. Who knows? Alright. So now it's Asha's turn to just pivot and, like, Hope for the best. Can she avoid... Nah, see, the template is so thin. She can't even move sideways. Like, they will just shift sideways and see her again. There's no way to hide. Um, Maybe she turns around. No, she doesn't turn around. Turning around would expose your rear to crossbows, Clarence. That'd be bad. I think she just has to pivot and be like, all right, shoot me. I was going to say they should turn around and, like, support the other bowmen, but... <laughs> you need my voice, God. <laughs> never give up, never surrender. Yes, yes. Um, hmm. I think he's checking just to make sure he's in the front, I guess. And... We're going to see all the volleys. Okay, what's the math say here? 
I think he might even shift forward into short range. Um, seven. It's eight out of nine is the odds to hit. Fourteen times eight is uh, 112. 112 of nine is like ten. Twelve. Twelve saves on four up means you lose six. Does he still have a token? He does. Yeah, so if they're in short range, which they might be, uh, he is expected to lose six to the double volley, assuming no field panic. <coughs> Oopsies, this is getting annoying. Um, yeah, I, I don't know if Gordy can hide. He's trying to, I think. He's trying to like just get every advantage. No, I respect the play. I respect the play, but the forest as I've said over and over and over again, is not actually that good at stopping shooting. Because you cannot hide an infantry or cavalry tray effectively. Solos, though, love it. You know, solo dragons, um, giants, dragonstone noble, that kind of stuff. Is he going forward? Might as well. Uh, might as well. No, what he should really do, he should, he should just stay out of eight but he's not he's just oh what is he trying to hide in the wood does he realize that anthony can just shift okay so this is actually good this actually is good play in gordy's part because it's forcing anthony to shift sideways instead of forward right so that actually does make sense he wants to Force Anthony to sideways to draw line of sight, and this way he will not get rerolls, and that really shifts the odds. Re with rerolls, I said he's going to lose six. Without rerolls, two out of three is twenty-eight over three. Twenty-eight over three is like nine. You lose like four or five. Oopsies. Where is my iPad? <clears throat> yeah, I think he's just trying to... Yeah, I think a two-inch shift to the side will still draw line of sight for the crossbows. Uh, but that's smart. You know, Gordy is, is actually still making all the best plays he can to minimize damage. Okay, so we should at this point see... And so I think he's going to shift to the left and then shift up, I imagine. Um... The conscripts might do a long bomb charge. Oh, I don't think he's been healing. Oh, when I say healing, I mean John. I don't think healed the conscripts. And is he gonna do a long bomb charge? It's a five. I think it's a five. That's a five. That's a spice it meat bottle. I think he's gonna go for it. Why not, right? You lose some wounds, no big deal. At this point in the game, probably doesn't matter. He's panicked. <laughs> or does he just play it safe and march up? He is first next. Marching is not a bad play either. And honestly, John should kill them anyway. With a sword. Wait, yes. I saw and misunderstood where this token was. Um, yeah. Yes, yes, Peter. Yep. Yeah, they've done so many different iterations of cover. I remember the original version used to be like if the majority of your tray was in the wood, I believe, or covered by the wood. Oh, I heard a dice. Did he try the charge? You would get. He failed. Uh, you would uh, get plus one to your save, and then became minus one to hit, which is better, I think, for shooting. Like, it's more penalizing, I should say. And now it's you just can't draw a line of sight, and it still doesn't do the job. Minus one to hit is probably almost more impactful, because it actually has an effect. They pass their panic. He is panicked. He's going to make him re-roll the 6 and D3, most likely. Might as well get some damage in. Yeah, you know what? The more I think about it, and he does fail, take three wounds. The more I think about it, the previous edition of the cover rules might have been better. 
right? Because even though you could always get shot, at least there was a penalty. The minus one would kick in, whereas now, like, this unit, let's be honest, this wood is covering most of this unit, and it does absolutely nothing to protect them. Like, this is not cool. You know, they should get some benefit from shooting here, but they get none. That's kind of silly. Um... You're right. You're not wrong, Peter. I remember we used to always have this debate, and luckily I'm, I play with nice people, so like, uh, you know, we would just kind of be like, "Yeah, I think you're half covered. Get the get the benefit." Oh, so your method would be: can you draw a line center to center without crossing over the wood? Yeah. Oh, wait. So hold on. Let's say in this case, would we say that the crossbows cannot shoot? the iron makers under your rules because yeah that would that would make a big difference like you just have to mm. great joys have so much tech boggler i gotta say like i really want to play great joys too won't lie because they got so many cool options uh so we got four hits saving on fours you know, with Wendemir giving you shifts and drawing cards, you've got all this cool healing. They've got a lot of variety of units. They have lots of cool options. Uh, it's a 3 plus save into a 4 plus save, so it loses 2 to be expected. And uh, panic at even. She's good. Did I? Is this. Two? Oh, it's 2 tokens. Right. This is 2 tokens. Wow, I forgot about that. Earlier on, I believe uh, the. Archer attack into the conscripts gave them another token. So they're actually very tanky. They are very, very tanky. Okay. So. Uh, Gordy's done. So he should eat another shot. And that's it. Right? He's going to shift forward to get re-rolls this time. Yeah, interesting. Center to center. If it goes to the wood, you can't shoot them. You'd have to add more verbiage, though, I think, right? Because technically, your tray could even be out of the wood. Okay, re-rolling. All right, we got all the hits. Uh, saving on threes. These are space marines. Space pirates. Gray marines. Three up. Loses two. Yeah, this unit is tough. Loaded iron makers are tough. Who would have thunk it? Panic on five. She's good. That was close. That was close, but she's good. All right. That's pretty much the end of the round. These constructs here can activate and just shift forward two. No big deal. And it will be six, five. And um, let's just think here. Six, five is effectively game over because all Anthony has to do is kill this unit. He'll be at seven. Hold the objectives. He'll be at ten. And that's all she wrote. It should be 10-6 by the end of the game. Unless he's got some crazy Greyjoy healing cards, which wouldn't be shocking. Uh, this should be the last round. He should kill this unit, score one point, hold three with John and the conscripts, and he should be up to 10. Is there any Greyjoy trickery here that can keep him alive? Let's find out. Anthony's drawn all but two cards. Gordy's drawn all but four cards, but we're late to the game. It's kind of to be expected at this point. All right, let's wrap it up. <laughs> That's true. It's abstract, right? Like, like this trays out, but since the majority is in, shouldn't they get a bonus? Yeah, and this is where I don't actually envy Michael Chanel or Fabio. Like, you have to write rules that are not like a lawyer's paragraph of text and yet get the effect across, you know? So it's like, it would be definitely tricky to word, I think. Uh, here's some dice. Uh, so we got Amon onto the sword, and this should be game here. This should be the final blow between the attack and the shot. This should be game eight attacks on threes. We got five hits, saving on fives. There's four guys left, as far as I know. Oh, 
terrible roll, and they're all dead. And that is that is game. That is game. He's going to be at seven. They can literally blitz through. There's no way to kill these conscripts. A crown zap cannot kill all five of them. And they can literally just call it here. There's no way. I mean, yeah, there's no way. There's no way. There's no way, realistically, right? Like, technically, Gordy can take the horse, turn this around, charge it into John, but, you know, there's too many steps in between. So, yeah, I'm just going to see if they click up and call it. I'm going to get my iPad ready so I can have a quick chat with them on my iPad, and then we'll see if they're willing to chat with us on Discord. Oh, shoot my phone. I hear some dice being thrown here. Is he going for the whole table? What's going on here? Um, hmm. Is he going for the table? Is this what's happening here? Did he lose four guys? Oh my god. He's just letting him shoot him. <laughs> um... Did he activate the unit? Is that why? Like, technically, Gordy should have got an activation there. I don't know how he attacked here. And oh, he did the quick fire into the back. I'm so stupid. Yes, that was quick fire into the back, not the crossbows. That was a good roll. That was a good roll. I mean, they have a 2 plus save. Uh, so, he heals up three. So, I think Anthony the Savage is going for the table. Uh, and this unit is not activated. They've only used the sword. So they can still charge, and they can still Victarion. Oh my god. Okay. Um, and he's for the watch. He can just take a free charge. Gross. This is quite gross. He's going to go for a free charge in the rear with John. He's looking at his last... Oh, right. I remember these cards. Is he going for... Oh my god. He's... I think he's going for the table. He... <laughs> oh man um yeah john is going into the rear with the for the watch there's another free attack he will lose the charge bonus since he's going through the wood uh has he thrown away both lights yet uh he's already played one light and he's oh he's got the sword wow he Threw down sword. Wow. I'm. I want to ask him about the cards he threw away. Where's the second light? Don't know. All right. So this unit has got tokens on it. Nine dice hitting on threes. No re rolls. Good roll. Though. Oh my god. Disgusting. Disgusting hit rolls. I gotta say. Eight hits at minus two. This could be a dead unit. Saving on fours with re rolls. Uh. Not bad. Oh, no, it's average. Never mind. Rolled perfectly average. Uh, Rerolling successes. He should lose six. Oh, no fails. They stand strong. So four guys go down. Panic at minus two. Asha is brave, but she's minus two with the panic token. Is a big pass, but he did roll a three. He might pop it here. I mean, I probably wouldn't because she cannot remove... Yeah, I don't know if I do that. She can't remove that panic token. Maybe she can. Greaters have ways of doing it. Never mind. Uh, she, she does not give an F. Does not give an F. You should retreat away probably with Swift Strike because when you charge back in, Victorion um, makes them re-vulnerable. You should probably retreat because Victorion makes them re-vulnerable. And those attacks should have been healing these conscripts, too. You know what? This is very Greyjoy. This is very Asha to stand, you know, to, to be the last person standing. Right? She's a brave pirate captain. Her men are actually loyal to her because she, she's actually tough and good at her job. Unlike Theon. So this is kind of, kind of thematic almost. Oh, we got some stuff happening. Uh, 
He's discarding the tokens to grab a card. Is he going to grab what is Dead Me Never Die? <laughs> oh. Okay, Kraken's Wrath. Uh, I wonder why that card. Hmm. This is Roderick. I wonder why Roderick. Oh, he's discarding this. I don't know what happened there. Oh, okay. He's playing We Do Not Sow, and he's using it with Kraken's Wrath. Cool. He's just going down swinging. Like, all of these odds are poor, but he's just like, I don't care. You know he's lost, he's just going down swinging. Uh, only one hit. Oh, rerolls because he's got the sword. Precision! Double precision. Take that, hunters. Uh, I think they fell. Okay, so we got two precisions, two dead, and a save on a five. Yeah, I still have all the heals, unfortunately. I still have all the heals. Oh, aren't those precisions? Doesn't matter, they're all dead anyway, so he should lose three regardless. And... Oh, it's crits! It's two dead and three crits. And he lost two because of shields. Uh, passes the panic. Passes the panic. Okay. Um, yeah, I guess you Tycho, I guess? Or maybe you attack and just try and kill him? I don't know. Last gasp from Asha there. That was actually pretty decent. That was actually pretty good. I forgot that the precisions are really impactful on the Iron Makers. Oh, wow. He does it a full heal with the conscripts. Ugh. Blech. Blech. Ugh. Disgusting. And he had he been healing with John this time, I'm sure there'd be more, more wounds on there as well. And yeah, he's just doing nine attacks in the back. No tokens. He's doing light for rerolls. Hilarious. Okay, chat. While the wrap up the game, are there any pressing questions you want to know? We've got six hits in the back. Are there any pressing questions you want to ask? Um, Anthony or Gamma. I'm not sure what I'm going to ask either, to be honest with you. It was, it's, yeah, so they are actually dead. So he's been tabled. Okay, any questions you want me to ask? Yeah, he's been pretty bad. <laughs> it's true. I only feel this disgusted with Night's Watch. Nothing else. I mean, I think all things are strong. Dragons are strong. Dragons are really good. But only Night's Watch make me actually feel dirty watching the game. Uh, okay, so I'm going to jump into the Discord real fast. I'm going to put myself on mute. Oh, boy. And any questions? Okay, I'm put myself on mute, folks. Okay, first question. I've got my earbuds in. Twitch chat, can you hear Gordy and Anthony? Uh, can you guys say something, Anthony or Gordy? Hello, Hello. how's it going? Can you hear us? Uh, I can hear you for sure, but the problem is I've got my earbuds in. Oh, they can hear you. Sweet. Okay, sweet. Okay, cool. So that game was super awesome to watch. I, I want to say that I actually thought it was actually really, really close. I think Anthony realized that he could actually lose the game because Dagmar was about to grab the objective. He might have been up 5-1. And then if the conscripts went down, he could have even won the game, you know, potentially, uh, I think, round four. So 
uh, I want to hear your thoughts about you know what worked, what didn't work, um, and I want to talk about the the big reaver push into the center that led to a very nasty charge uh, that really lasted longer than I thought it would. So let's start with um, Gordy. Let's talk about your thoughts. Uh, all right. So originally, I wasn't planning when I built my list to run Dagmar into Night's Watch. Uh, my Baylor list, I thought was going to be my Night's Watch list because the sheer amount of damage that um, basically Giant Order on Iron Makers and Baylor with Giant Order can tank. Like, it's it's a stupid amount of wounds that it can take. But I knew I was going to be down one activation and the top table at the final round I didn't think was the time to try out a list that I have only played once. Uh, yeah. So I played this list. Um... I I was super happy with it through the whole tournament. Um, it was the the turning point. We were just talking about it was when Victorian died, and he got he took, took the, the black, black and went to John. <laughs> the because whole, the that, whole chat groaned when that happened. Yeah, that was a three activation swing. I lose two. He gains one, and now it's an extra attack for those hunters that just fly around the board plus on all those charges it's putting out vulnerable tokens which normally they they just rely on flat dice um so at that point i was like try to try to grab objectives see how long you can hold out but uh it, it was only a matter of time before before this happened essentially so so you know what Definitely when um, Victorian took the black, it was looking really grim. However, when it was, we're, we're doing the count, I was like, I think Gordy's going to score four points off objectives, especially when you took it off the conscripts. And I'm like, okay, those conscripts are down to the last six wounds. If Gordy goes first, takes the sword, he can kill the conscripts, get a point, be up to seven, and then win the game potentially. So, Anthony, was there a fear, despite killing and taking Victorian, that you could still lose? Um, yeah, like I knew it wasn't like, obviously that was a huge play and I was very happy about it, but, uh, I knew it wasn't over just yet because he was ahead in points. He had more objectives and I didn't know, you know, if I could get to him in time, if he could block some things and those conscripts weren't holding up. So I, I was still like a little bit nervous and I, I wasn't in, uh, in autopilot. I was still being very calculated, making sure I like got to everywhere I needed to. Because yeah, it was it definitely wasn't wasn't over just yet. Did you expect um, Gordy to be so aggressive with the Reavers? That I guess yeah, I was a bit because I part of my like going into like when looking at his list or like any list, I'm like okay, you know, is there any cool attachment I could take the black with? And so seeing Victorian, I'm like okay, my play is I want to go for that unit because it's a soft unit, and if I have take me take the black, then yeah, it's just a crazy activation swing. So that was my plan, and then when he came at me, it made it a bit easier. So I thought he would have maybe put them uh, maybe in a, a safer spot, but uh, I guess it is pretty hard to avoid like the long range, and it's pretty hard to run away from John and Hunters. Mm -hmm. But I thought so I was happy it lined up there. Yeah, quickly on that, I when I marched um, Asha up to grab that point, I thought I had covered just enough ground to make it so that the hunters couldn't get in. So, like, Victorian's safe from hunters if I charged the crossbows. Victorian's safe from the shot. I I should have moved her, I think, just, like, a little bit further ahead to make sure that he couldn't get in there, but I I didn't measure it out perfectly. I should have done, like, <laughs> been right down to the millimeter and checking, like, if you do this crazy play. But, I mean, I, I didn't see it coming. And... My Asha play didn't quite fill in the gap I wanted it to, which led to Victorian and the snowball. Yeah, we we were definitely watching that move that um, Anthony did very closely. It was it was pretty pretty nuts to like get that charge and then still able to retreat and barely be in range of the reavers to you know do some extra chip damage in there. Um, Anthony, a, a question for you. Um, I was really curious, what cards were you throwing at the bottom of your deck or, like throughout the first couple of turns? Because we didn't see a lot of the typical cards come out, I'd say. Like, we didn't see it for the watch till super late. Um, so did that, like, did the way the game flowed change what cards you were cycling down? 
I, I didn't get the cards I wanted early. Like I was really waiting for for the watch and watcher <clears throat> to get because I know you know because he has Bowman, I could get that little jump, that two inch jump, and then the plus one inch is huge with hunters. And so I was a little I didn't get it, and that would have I would have been able to jump the hunters like and and hit uh, Victorian a lot earlier actually when he started shooting with his bowman, but sadly I didn't have it. So I was hunting for that. What, some of the cards I sent, like one time I used Bowen and I looked at two It Shall Not Ends. So that was horrible. Oh. Uh, so I took one, put one at the bottom, and then I ended up just discarding it later. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I didn't have all the best cards, but um, whatever. I was getting a million cards, so eventually it was going to come. Um, Gordy, I, I really uh, appreciate how scrappy and like how like how how young into it like i really liked how dagmar slowly found his way onto like the weak side and was like positioned to like grab that objective i like how you know asha was actually buried deep in the wood with a with a pillage token and very hard to dislodge so you know this is obviously like the boogeyman night's watch is super scary to run into and you really made a, like, a good game out of it um was that the plan the entire time was to like to like scoot dagmar away because he's so squishy right he's never going in the front line to grab an objective Dagmar, depending on where the John Bows went, um, Dagmar was either going to try to grab that center objective instead of Asha and just hide in the woods, or, like I did, scoot to that side. And then when, well, essentially because of the Victorian play and he could get that extra shot and charge into Dagmar, I knew I couldn't just grab the objective. Yeah. I had to block my bowman from getting charged while not taking the objective with Dagmar and it's kind of like a, a bit of a, a a bit of a feels bad because I'm like I know I could score an extra point here if I didn't just give you my best attachment yeah oh that is rough um, Mitch wants to ask Anthony why do you hate Rally Cry why do I, I hate as in you bear you barely used it during your game. Like we feel like you you miss a lot of chances to heal off Rally Cry. Oh, I know. I'm so bad at. I I actually was. I actually thought I was pretty good at the beginning of the game. I was remembering it a lot, but then I. Think I saw. I I, yeah, towards the end of the game. I guess. I guess you had all the heals. So easy to forget. So easy it to is. forget. Okay. Yeah, once well, you have like yeah, fifty thousand cards on there. <laughs> that's yeah. true. That's true. All right, gentlemen. Well, thank you so much for uh, entertaining us tonight. It was great to watch. Um, and I'm you know. For the other games that are still to pass, I'm still happy to stream more, even though we've kind of got our, our, our top positions kind of cemented out. Um, I want to just put out a, a, an advertisement. I haven't mentioned this during the last stream, is that uh, I've been talking to the um, organizers of the Can Hammer team tournament and the Capital City Bloodbath, and we're loosely, very loosely in the works to plan a Great Canadian Open Summer Edition in August in Ottawa. So we're hoping to maybe unite the communities from Southern Ontario and uh, and um, and Quebec and hopefully uh, the East Coast guys can fly down too, hopefully. So uh, that is the loose, loose goal right now for August, but uh, we'll, we'll find out more during May. Amazing. Um, I will try and be there. Awesome. All right, well, thank you so much again, gentlemen. Have a good night. Get some rest. Uh, and right. Anthony, congratulations. You're the first Great Canadian Open champion. And, Can I just uh, give one quick shout-out here? Absolutely. <laughs> uh, I know, I know, literally my whole family's watching. It's my mother-in-law's birthday today. So, happy birthday, Norm. Happy Thanks birthday. Thanks for watching. Happy birthday. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Um, cool. So thanks again, and uh, congratulations, Anthony, for coming in first place. We'll see how everybody else's rankings shake out. Um, and yes, if the any other gamers uh, are still looking to play and get their game streamed, send me a message, and I'll see if I can get that done. All right, folks. Have a good night. Ciao. Cheers. Cheers. All right, folks. That is uh, the top table wrapped and dusted. So have a good night, folks. Thank you for watching, and um, we'll see you guys next time. Stay tuned.